All right, guys, thanks for clicking on the video. As you can see by the title, yeah, we're going to do a big Severn unboxing today. Um, I pretty much outlined this up, too, as well as the reason why I got this. Um, everything fell together very, uh, just so fucking perfect, where I was just like, you know what? This would be a great idea to do. And this will definitely uh, be a huge box for me to have and have some fun with while I await all my orders from the, uh, the Black Friday sale. So guys, this will be a little bit of a video. I can assure you I've got a pretty good size box here. Um, I'm trying to think of exactly how many items is in the box. Um, it used to say on the bottom of the orders. I have my phone right here open where I took screenshots of all the orders and I was just trying to figure out. Um, I don't know exactly how many different pieces there is, but I can assure you there's about 12 movies, one book. I bought an additional slip cover, bought some blank cases, I bought about 15 of their enamel pins because I bought two of them for myself and also my buddy Cody. When I got them in my hands, I was like, wow, these pins are great. Um, I usually don't collect shit like that and uh, spend a lot of money on that, but they had all of these on sale and I was like, why the fuck not? I could throw that in there to be some nice big chunk of swag for the fucking box. So, got that, and plus I got some miscellaneous merch too as well in the box. So guys, this will be a lengthy video, please feel free. Pause it, do whatever you got to do. Go get, yourself, go get yourself a drink, go get yourself a snack. Let's kick back, let's have some fun. Anyway, guys, I will show you the box that I got right here. Um, It is December 2nd. It's 9.15 a.m. in the morning. I literally just gotten off of work about 7, 7.15, something like that. And I was like, you know what, let me check my tracking right quick. I did get an email saying that uh, my box was supposed to be delivered to my post office. Um, it was estimated delivery for today, which is December 2nd. And I was like, let me check it right quick if it's there. I'll go ahead and run by right quick, right after work, and uh, when the post office opens, I'll be right there to grab it. And sure enough, I checked the tracking, and the post office had just scanned it in, and I was like, fucking perfect. I'll go to the post office right quick, grab the box, and I'll come immediately home, and I'll shoot the video. And this is why we're here now. Um, fell on a perfect time, too. I actually took tonight off of work as a personal day, so I got a four-day weekend ahead of me. So after I get done doing this video, though, however... I already have my pajamas on. My ass is going to bed. But I'm so excited. I had to do this box now. I could not just let it sit on the kitchen table and just be like, well, I'll get to it and shoot that video after I wake up today. Because there's no fucking way I'd go to sleep just thinking about it. So, uh, yeah, that's the kind of person I am. Mm. Before I forget about it. Uh, so this is how this all lined up. So everybody knows that Severin and Vinegar Syndrome does the biggest fucking sales, especially for the Halfway to Black Friday sale. Which is the half year sale, and not to mention the Black Friday sale. It's the Black Friday sale itself. So I was noticing, um, of course, Vinegar Syndrome and Severin, both their websites, uh, they usually tell everybody on social media and give everybody a heads up saying, hey, you know, like, um, you know, especially Thursday being, you know, uh, that Thursday when it's Thanksgiving, we usually shut down the site a couple days beforehand, usually beginning that Monday. We'll shut down the site for about four days to get the site prepped and ready, get some maintenance done to it, plug in all of our sell stuff, change prices and all that good stuff, and then when it comes back up live, that's when the sale starts. So I noticed about a week or two before Severin's website went down to uh, prep the site for their sale, they were on Facebook and other means of social media, and they were saying like, hey, you know, like um, we have, you know, all the bundles that we have released um, in, the, in the past uh, couple of months, which I believe there was like, I don't know, maybe like four or five or six of them, something like that. They were saying that their bundles were no longer going to be available. Not the movies themselves were going to be available. It's just no longer the bundles were going to be available. Um, you know, my understanding is, you know, if you buy the movies individually, like let's say a bundle has four movies in it for the month of September, um, each movie is going to run you about 28 bucks a piece. However, if you buy the whole bundle itself and you don't have those movies, you can save a few bucks because... You know, averaging out, it comes out to about, mm, some of them are, you know, $79, some of them are $100. Um, it saves it saves a few bucks here and there. And if you don't have none of the movies and you're interested in them, it's like the fucking perfect time to do it. So, um, so this is the way I've done it. <clears throat> so, they got on social media and they said that, hey, you know, as soon as the site goes down, these bundles are no longer going to be available. We are uh, taking the bundle option off the website. However, you can order the movies individually. But here's the biggest catch of that. All the movies that were in the bundles for the past six months were automatically excluded for being discounted in the upcoming sale. So I thought to myself, I was like, wait a minute. 
you know, if I ordered all the stuff that I wanted right now, is there a chance that I could possibly get them to send that to me, uh, you know, before the craziness and the madness of Black Friday starts? And that way I'll have me a nice big box to go on and dive into while I sit back and wait for my Black Friday orders to get here, which usually takes me about, from the time the site goes down after the sale's over with, it usually takes seven about a good month from the time it, from the time the sale's over until I get my box. So what I did was, I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it a shot in the dark. I'm going to email them right quick. I was at work one night, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to send them an email. I'm going to ask them, like, hey, I see that you're on social media. You're promoting those uh, those bundles uh, for, like, the past six months. And uh, I was just curious. If I do buy those, will you send them to me before the Black Friday sale starts? Because I kind of don't want to be waiting on my Black Friday sale orders plus that. Immediately, one of the representatives of Severin got right back in touch with me and was like, "Look, please feel free to order anything you want to on the site right now. While it's up and go while it's up and running, anything you order right now, we will send it your way immediately, as long as it's not pre-orders." And I was like, "Fuck yeah! This is my perfect chance. What I can do is I can go ahead and put myself together a huge fucking box together, and I'll get it while I'm sitting here, just." you know, waiting for my Black Friday orders to get here. So it fucking lined up perfectly. I'm so glad I emailed them because as soon as they responded back and I was great customer service, they immediately replied right back just telling me, hey, please put your confidence in us. If you order anything right now on the website that's not pre-orders and it's already released on our website, you are going to fucking get it immediately. Sure enough, that's exactly how it happened. I placed my order on, I'll tell you the exact date. It was November 19th. It was literally like 5.04 a.m. in the morning. And today is December 2nd. So, it did take a few days. I noticed that it left the warehouse. Uh, they have a warehouse in Arizona, which I think they primarily ship from. That's where I keep getting all my shit from Severn from. I think I've ordered this year alone. Jesus Christ, not even including the halfway to Black Friday. So, I probably placed like eight or nine orders with them. And every time I order something from them, I always kind of expect it to come from uh, Los Angeles, California. Because I know that's where the Severn headquarters office is. But I believe their distribution warehouse where they house all their products and all their merchandise and films, I think that is primarily in Arizona. And I've even heard um, David Gregory himself in an interview that Master Chaos was doing with him. And he even said that he had left Los Angeles, California, him and, an, and his partner, and they had went to Arizona just to help fill packages for the halfway to Black Friday sale, which is known as uh, Severn Nukes the Mid-Year Sale. Um, the sale that just happened... Um, this year, 2021, um, I think they were pretty much overwhelmed with orders and they were definitely trying to get in there and help out fill those boxes and all that stuff. So even Degger, David Gregory himself being the fucking head honcho of Severn Films took himself down there and filled up some boxes to make sure customers were getting those things. So that's fucking awesome. At least we're, at least it's, it's safe to say he's not just some big wig who probably just sits back in a fucking office sipping fucking Heineken's and lets his grunts do all the work. So, <clears throat> yeah, guys, that's the story of that. I hate to bore you with that, especially like the first eight minutes of the fucking video, but I want to give you a breakdown of it. I know uh, a lot of people are probably watching this video being like, dude, like, why did you buy all that shit? Like, none of that shit was discounted. Why didn't you just wait for the sale? That would have been perfect if this shit, any of this shit would have been discounted in the sale, but I'm telling you, everything I'm going to pull out of this box was not discounted in the sale. There was even some of the merch in here that I bought some of the pins I got for six for five or six dollars a pop. Some of them even cheaper, and I noticed those pins were in the Black Friday sale for like eight to ten dollars a pop. So I got to save money on that. None of these movies were discounted for the Black Friday sale because they are considered new releases. Anything six months from the time the sale starts and back is considered a new release, and it's not going to be discounted. So I did my homework very fucking carefully because, of course, I am one who likes to save money and get the best deals where I can. So, uh, as far as the merch side goes, uh, I should say this. As far as the movie, the movies I'm going to pull out of this box, they were not discounted. Um, I did get them for a discount because I bought the bundle packages themselves from, from the website. But, um, but yeah, everything else was pretty much at a discount, though. A really good fucking discount. And I even got some deals, like I said, like the pins and some of the miscellaneous merch. I definitely got that cheaper before the sale even happened. So I even went back to double check myself just to, just to make sure. All right, guys, 10 minutes in, I think we should fucking start this thing. Sorry to bore the hell out of everybody with that. 
Very excited though. Can't wait to dig into this shit. This is a this is a pretty huge fucking box right here. And the shit that I got coming for the Black Friday, uh, the orders that I placed during the Black Friday sale, I think I made six orders. And holy fuck, I told myself to grab just the essentials. Don't go completely fucking crazy. And what did I do? As soon as, well, the sale went live, it took me a while to place my first order, which took a couple of hours because the site was fucked up, as always. But as soon as I got my first order in, went in there and placed my second order, which I had a little bit of trouble with that. But after that, about the four-hour mark of that sale, of the sale being live, I went fucking crazy for the next four orders. So, guys, hopefully in a month from now, um, well, hopefully not a month. I'm hoping to get that box before Christmas, but we'll see what happens. Um, I kind of expect, hey, if it does come before Christmas, that's fucking awesome. If the Black Friday sale stuff does does come after Christmas, hey, it happens, man. A lot of a lot of people hit those fucking sites and all that good stuff, man. So it's all good. All right, guys, let's get this thing started. All right, guys, I'll hold it up right quick. I hope I don't run out of memory on this thing. If I do, I'll just have to shoot two parts. All right, guys, so here's the big box that I got from them right here. Just picked it up at the post office, like I said. Got my knife right here. We'll go ahead and cut into this thing. I know Severin loves to pack their boxes full of fucking packing peanuts, so I know I'm going to make a huge fucking mess back here, but I'll clean that shit up later after I get up. So, guys, I will hold it up. I haven't even opened it yet. Just cut the tape. We'll open it up just a little bit so you can take a peek what's in there. And holy shit, that's a lot of packing peanuts in there. All right, guys, I am going to sit it down right here, and we'll go through this box one thing at a time. All right, what should we start with first? I hope everything's in this box. I hope they didn't send the shit in two separate boxes because this is all the post office gave me. All right, first up, guys. First movie I pulled out of here is Warriors of the Year 2072. If I'm not mistaken, that is a Lucio Fulci film. Um, they did roll these out, uh, a good majority of these films they rolled out during, well, I should say some of them they rolled out, uh, especially during that month of the black, of the halfway to Black Friday sale, Severn Nukes to Mid-Year sale. Um, I do know of a couple of them, but this was definitely one of them. I think this was what they were calling the Marauders Bundle, which there's three more, I think there's two more movies and a book, and the book should be in that box, and the other film should be in there, but yeah, this is the, uh. Warriors of the Year, 2072. This is a Lucio Fulci film from 1983, 95 minutes. This is region A locked, and guys, I will tell you there is a good bit of uh, good bit of special features in here, and not to mention I did get the I guess this would be considered a limited edition because it does have the bonus disc in here, which is disc two, which is a CD soundtrack. So I fucking love that. Uh, I know a lot of people don't give a fuck whenever it comes to limited editions. Especially Severance Limited Editions, whenever you see one on their website that does say Limited Edition that's available, that usually either means it's just coming with a slipcover, or it's coming with a CD soundtrack. And a lot of people could give a fuck less about the CD soundtrack, and they'd rather have a slipcover instead. I'm the exact opposite. I like my slipcovers, and I like that shit, and I like to chase it when I can, as long as I don't have to pay extra for it. But if I had my pick, I would choose a CD soundtrack any day of the week over a fucking slipcover because I get more use out of the fucking soundtrack. I love music. And these things are always fun to put in the car and pop them in when I'm taking a little road trip or wherever. Um, especially if I watch the film and I love the fucking, and, and I love the music for the film, of course I'm going to listen to it. Uh, but yeah, guys, uh, thank you, Maestro Fulci, the legendary Italian exploitation maven delivers a world defined by exciting editing inspired shooting fun action and trademark gore hits the first ever authorized american blu-ray release plus riz or taliani soundtrack cd um i fucking love this movie lucio lucio takes his own spin on what comes after the end of the world it's basically rollerball with fulci's penchant for blood it says bns about movies so yeah, cool deal. So yeah, guys, that's the first film out of the box. I will try to flip it right there so you guys can see they are not fucking around with them features right there. And right there it does say the bonus CD right there, which is the CD soundtrack. Guys, I don't know if that light's too bright or too dim for you guys to see, but I will try to crank it up just a little bit. I don't know if you can really see that really good. If you can, please feel free to pause it, take a look. But that is the first one out of the box. I can tell you one thing that is annoying about Severn products, and it's every one of their movies, Blu-rays, DVDs, you name it, 
they put the security uh, tape on top of them right there. So every time I open a fucking seven release, I always have to fuck with that shit. Um, I know a little trick now to get that shit off really easy without leaving the sticky shit on it. It's just it's kind of annoying. Um, here's another one right here that's part of the Marauders bundle. Actually, you know what? I should pull open the pictures right quick because I have every bundle. I took a screenshot of all the bundles in here to make sure I knew what the fuck I was doing. Uh, I don't want to waste you guys' time, but I do want to make sure I'm, I'm pronouncing the right bundle correctly. Uh, let's go back. Perfect. Right there. Let me find that Pacific bundle, and there it is. All right. Yes, it, this is part of the Marauders bundle. So the first one I pulled out right there, Warrior of the Year 2072. Next one right here, which I've heard fucking great things about. Um, I was even told I should have fucking bought this during the Severn Nukes to mid-year sale. I passed on it because I only had like, you know, 46 other fucking movies I put in my cart. And this wasn't one of them, but I made up for it now. That is Raiders of Atlantis. Um, this is uh, directed by Ruggiero Diodato. Um, I do know that Severn just put out his Cannibal Holocaust book for this sale. Um, I want to say too, was that, um, I know he's, uh, Severn's got, Severn's got their fucking dick in a lot of his shit. But, uh... Yeah, I can tell you guys, this is definitely a one-disc set from what I see back here. A few special features, not like Warriors of the Year 2072, but there is a couple right there, including an interview with the director, um, mm -hmm, uh, Quest for Atlantis, an interview with the uh, cinematographer, an audio commentary with Vinegar Syndrome's Brad Henderson and actor Tony King. So that's fucking cool. Brad Henderson actually did an audio commentary for a Severn release, even though he's definitely with uh, vinegar syndrome uh so that's fucking awesome uh <laughs> I, I said that but it says it right there on the back it says fucking awesome fast-paced weird and extreme in violence and design this movie is pure cocaine snorting 80s gold says grindhouse review that is a fucking review right there fast-paced weird and extreme in violence and design this movie is pure cocaine snorting 80s gold fuck man what would ah that alone makes me want to watch it right now uh, strap yourself in for a wild ride, an ultra gory disco themed post apocalyptic sci fi action horror adventure, and one of the wackiest Italian exploitation efforts of all time, says the spinning image. Like I said, guys, this is Raiders of Atlantis uh, from 1983, 92 minutes. This is Region A Locked, so another one that's Region A Locked, and this one was from 1983 as well, so holy shit. So yeah, guys, there's the second movie. Like I said, for the Marauders Bundle, there is three films plus a book. And here's the next film for that Marauders Bundle right here. Uh, this is the limited edition. I see a sticker. I'm just making sure I didn't drop nothing. Uh, this is the third film. This is a uh, Joe Diamato film. So nice, man. Fucking Fulci, Diodato, and Joe Diamato film right here. That's a hell of a bundle. But the third film in that Marauders Bundle is Endgame. Uh, this is the limited edition. There's 2,000 units only with bonus CD soundtrack music composed by Carla Maria Cordillo. Um, Cardia. Um, I was about to fucking say something and it totally... Uh, oh, anyway. Uh, I bought... I've now bought a ton of Severn releases with that sticker right there. It said limited edition. And most, most of the time it's either 2,000 or 3,000. I can tell you this right now. Um, I bought Zombie 3 and 4 recently. Uh, this year, it was probably about the summertime, I went into Orbit DVD, they were sitting right there on the shelf, it was the limited editions, they still have the stickers on there saying limited to 3,000. I have a hard time believing that those movies were released a couple years ago, and uh, that first print run is still available. I would assume that Vinegar Syndrome, uh, some Vinegar Syndrome, I'm assuming that Severn probably definitely sells these really good, and uh, they just press up more and they keep adding the sticker to it. I could be wrong, I don't want to you know, I don't want to say that's a fact or that's truth. That's just my opinion. I just have a hard time believing that anything that you stamp limited edition on or collector's edition or any of that, um, that market employee tactics kind of shit like that. I have a hard time that it stays around for a couple of years, especially with that low quantity, because there is collectors out there, a ton of them who buy limited edition releases, even though they hate the fucking movie, they never plan on watching it. And they'll just literally take them and put them up on their shelf. And there's plenty of people out there who do that. So I have a hard time believing that these things uh, sit on the shelf. Especially like Zombie 3 and 4 over there. Um, that's been out on Blue right now for like God knows how many years. It's been a couple of years. I just have a hard time believing that. I believe if 
yeah, in my opinion, I think Severn just represses it all up in the same exact package, sticks the same exact sticker on the front of them, just to make the uh, the uh, the customer feel like they're buying something limited and something special. But anyway, hey, fuck it, whatever. At least it stays around, and uh, you know, I'm like I'm like anybody else, man. That you know, it's it's great when they add some great stuff, especially like the Arrow Video stuff with the limited editions. You get those. Uh, you know, sometimes you get extra films in there, uh, better bonus features sometimes with exclusive interviews. Uh, the, you know, the big book's always uh, um, some, some great literature to read up on the film, the double-sided poster and all that swag. That is great shit. It makes it, you know, makes it worthwhile buying it. Um, here we go right here, guys. I'm just fucking rambling on. Uh, essential film during the peak of the Italian post-apocalyptic love affair with a solid gold line up of stars post-apocalyptic uk he said that almost non-stop action with joe diamato directing you can't go wrong says forces of geek um this is also another film color from 1983 just like the other two uh 97 minutes and guys this one is region locked this is region a locked uh, special features alter the bomb interview with actor luigi montelifiori and george eastman uh, there's a trailer, and of course the bonus disc is the CD soundtrack for Endgame. Guys, we'll hold that up there. I hope you can see it. Please feel free to pause if you want to strain your eyeballs to look at that. Sorry, I don't have the best camera for that. I don't know if I even held up uh, Raiders of Atlantis right there. I'll hold that up so you guys can see it. Please feel free to pause. And uh, Warriors of the Year 2072, I'll try to hold that up. I think I held that up a while ago, but hopefully you can frame it up real good right there, pause it, and not give yourself a fucking headache reading that. So guys, that is the three films from the Marauders Bundle. I'm assuming the book is at the very bottom, so guys, we'll just have to come to that here in a little bit. Um, I do see the blank cases right here, so I do want to take those out first. Uh, guys, I did buy five, right? I bought five double-disc black cases. Um, I do have, uh, I think I only have one or two up there that's in a blue double disc case that I need to put black cases on. So I only need like really, I only need like one or two of these, but I went ahead and bought like three extras, three or four extras, just because they're great to have. Um, it seems like every time I'm either buying a Severn release off of eBay or I go to Orbit or just anything like that. And sometimes I even buy films from Severn themselves. That's the older releases when they were still using the blue cases. I love to immediately swap those to the black cases, um, just to keep my uh, my shelf looking very consistent. And uh, I'm very OCD about that shit. Um, with the the um, with the Severn cell too, so I bought five of these of the double disc um, blank cases right here. They didn't have any of the single disc ones available when I went on the website when I made this huge order before Black Friday. So when Black Friday came around, they actually had the single disc black cases available so i went ahead and ordered five of those which i only think i need like one or two of them but it's always a good thing to have extras of these around because i plan on buying plenty of more Severn releases especially um, if i can get them for a good price used on ebay um chase them down for a good price and stuff like that and uh if they come in blue cases at least i got the black ones to uh, get those things switched out enough with my ocd all right guys i see this up on top and i do not have this color sticker yet um, I want to say that's kind of a, yeah, that's kind of a, yeah, it's purple. It's kind of hard to tell with that fucking blue ring, uh, blue ring light right there. But there we go. There's a Severn sticker they threw in the box right there. We'll set that off to the side so I don't lose it. Um, guys, I did buy this as well. This is an Al Adamson film. They had this on there. I'm trying to think how much this was. I think it was like a dollar. I think could have been two dollars at most. Um, but this is a patch. It is for Satan Sadist. Um, I have bought a lot of miscellaneous merch like this from uh, Severn, especially during uh, Severn Nukes the Mid-Year Sale. I bought a ton of stickers. Um, I'm trying to think that I buy any... Yeah, I did. I bought the uh, the St. Bernard patch. Uh, and I probably bought a few other things, but yeah, I went ahead and picked that up while that was in there. Like I said, I think it was only a dollar. So, uh, what the fuck? Just another little extra little piece to throw in the box. All right, guys. So, yeah, there's a bunch of shit in here. Hold on. Let me see what that is. That is definitely a pin. All right, guys. So let me find this one right here. 
This is the September 2021 Blu-ray bundle. Uh, they didn't give it a name. It was just not like the Marauders bundle. This is uh, the September bundle, and I'll go ahead and start with this one. Uh, this is A Day of Judgment. <clears throat> no jack shit about this film. I did look at the trailer, though. Uh, let's see. This is from 1981, 97 minutes. Uh, guys, this is all region, A, B, and C on the back. Let's see what we got. Oh, God, my stomach's cramping. Uh, let's see. Directed by CDH Reynolds. I have no clue who that is. Uh, truly a joy to behold. It may be one of the most unusual entries made during the golden age of the slasher film. So, hey, a slasher film. Uh, a slasher for the whole family. Here it is, folks. The first and probably only Christian slasher movie ever made. What the fuck did I buy? Ah, uh, that's a turn off. <laughs> anyway, not trying to be too hypocritical here. Uh, special features you got. Looks like, uh, The Atheist Sins. Interview with author of Nightmare USA. Stephen Thrower. Fuck yeah, that's always a treat. Um, I do plan on getting my hands on that book. I've heard so many people reference it. I know Stephen Thrower is, uh, a, a, a very consistent collaborator with, uh, David Gregory of, uh, Severn Films because they always have him on the special features doing an interview. And that guy's an endless fucking pit of knowledge for any film. Um, so that is a fucking plus. Even if the movie sucks, if it's a fucking 30 minute interview with him uh, detailing and describing this movie, I'm almost sure I'll probably have a different, uh, uh, way of looking at the movie. Uh, Tales of Judgment interviews with filmmaker Worth Keeter and writer Tom McIntyre. So yeah, 1981, 97 minutes. Uh, I know 1981, everybody knows that, especially if you're a fucking uh, slasher junkie like me. 1981 was a fucking year, that's for sure. Uh, this does say the worldwide Blu-ray premiere. So now scanning 2K from the IP for the first time ever. So, hey, at least Severin uh, dug it up and put it out. So, yeah, that is A Day of Judgment. So, guys, we'll keep going. What's the next one here? Fuck, the next one is from a completely different bundle. I don't want to do that like that. Uh, sorry, guys. That's going to be a little tricky to do it like that. Hold on. Uh, where the fuck is the other one? We put it down here in the bottom somewhere? Damn, I hope so. Either that or I'm missing some shit and they didn't put it all in here. I don't know. We'll just have to fucking dig through it and go through it, I guess. Uh, the next one up, guys. This is from Carol Baker. This is from, uh, just like the uh, Day of Judgment, this is from the September 2021 Blu-ray bundle. This is The Fourth Victim. Uh, Carol Baker. Uh, let's see. It was directed by Eugenio Martin. Uh, this is Region A Locked. It's from 1971, so early 70s film right here. 88 minutes. Enjoy the ride. A twisty giallo that keeps bobbing and weaving just enough to stay ahead of expectations, said the giallo files. Um, this is the English language Blu-ray premiere. An impossibly rare giallo. A tale of murder, deceit, and swimming pools that harks back to, ba Whoa, harks back to Baker's previous Euro thrillers. Okay. Hmm. Wait a second here. Yeah, guys, this is Region A Lock, just so you know. Special features. Uh, looks like an interview with the director. Also, the bi uh, biographer, Carlos Argiliar. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Deleted scene and a trailer. Not too much there. But hey, it's, uh, it is something. Uh, yeah, I don't know why the, why the wrap kind of, I wonder if it got really cold or something like that before they put it in the box, or maybe my box probably sat out in the cold for a little bit or something for all I know, but the wrap on that one, I'm going to have to straighten that out. Uh, yeah, I don't know jack shit about this, but apparently it's definitely a giallo film, and it's from 1971, so, yeah, so, I'm trying to think, was this the one I looked at the fucking trailer for, did I even bother looking at the trailer for this one? Might have been one that slipped that slipped by me. I don't know. Hmm. In this rarely seen but always surprising giallo made between A Quiet Place to Kill and Knife of Ice, Golden Globe winning Academy Award nominated Hollywood exile Car Carol Baker from Baby Doll and Something Wild stars as the new bride of a wealthy British playboy Oscar nominee Michael Craig of The Angry Silence and Mysterious Island whose three previous wives met with suspiciously accidental deaths. Hmm, imagine that. 
Marina Malfatti. Malfatti, I don't know, probably pronouncing that wrong. All the colors of the dark, which I just ordered. Uh, Co-stars in this 1971 Italian-Spanish co-production directed by you. God, how do you pronounce that? Eugenio Martin. E U G E N I O. Somebody help me for fuck's sakes, because I don't know how to read. Um, Eugenio Martin, Horror Express. Ooh, damn, yeah, that's a fucking awesome flick. Okay, well, at least I know who the director, what the director kind of did. Uh, let's see, and co-written by Santiago Mancata. Hatchet for the Honeymoon, with a score by Piera Umalani. Bob Dolls for an August Moon, which I think Arrow uh, Video put that out. Also known as Death at the Deep End of the Swimming Pool. And the last, Mrs. Anderson. Now scanned in 2K from the original negative. So yeah, that's completely fucking, it's going to be blind to me. I have seen Horror Express before. I highly doubt that this is going to be anywhere probably anything like Horror Express. Uh, but yeah, if it's the Horror Express, Horror Express I'm thinking of, holy fuck, that is a flick. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this is like half as good as that and I'll be happy. If not, it'll go somewhere else. See, that's the fourth victim. Ah, uh, guys, there's one more fucking movie that's supposed to be in this box from that bundle. And it's gonna drive me insane. I hope they didn't fucking forget it. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I don't see the movie. I do see the slipcover that I got for the movie that's supposed to be in here for this bundle. And that is the movie Midnight. Um, this slipcover was not available for this when they first announced this movie for this bundle. I think they printed this slipcover later on. This is kind of known as like a convention stock only um, slipcover. But they had the slipcover on there by itself for five bucks. So I just went and grabbed it. Um, some great fucking art, I can tell you that. Uh, I'm really kind of hoping the movie's in the fucking box, though. Uh, I'll tell you what, before we go further, because it's going to kill me. If it wasn't for all these fucking packing peanuts. Guys, I'm almost positive that they fucking forgot to put my movie in here, so I'm gonna have to email them if that's the case. Yeah, my hand would have done. It's safe to say they definitely forgot uh, to put Midnight in there. Un fucking fortunate, but that seems to be the case, so I'll have to uh, I'll have to email them so they can send me the fucking movie. I am kind of tired. I'm hoping I just didn't lay it somewhere and forget about it, but you guys saw me open the box. Yeah, well, that was nice of them to send me the fucking slipcover, but not the movie. Fuck me running. Alright guys, so I'll go ahead and open this up right quick to show you. This was... So the Marauders Bundle was the three movies that I showed you, which was, of course, uh, Warriors of the Year 2072, Raiders of Atlantis, and Endgame. Um, it was those three movies and this book. During the Severn Nukes the Mid-Year Sale, this fucking book sold out so fast it wasn't even funny. David Gregory, David Gregory himself immediately hopped online and on social media to let everybody know that they were going to make, they were going to press more of these books because they definitely didn't expect them to sell the way they did. And uh, individually, they sold like fucking crazy. They sold out fast. And uh, they went pretty quick, too, as uh, far as the bundles uh, go. But everybody jumped on these books right here. Just checking it. Make sure everything looks all right. Got a little dog-eared right there. But I think they just wrapped it so fucking tight. But anyway, this is the hard... This is the hardback. God damn, that's a hell of a size of a book. But it's definitely a hardback book. This is uh, After the World Ends, when post-apocalyptic movies were telling the future. So, nice fucking good size book right there. Um, it does got a fucking, uh, uh, the theatrical poster for Escape from New York on the back of there, Warriors of the Wasteland and Wired to Kill. So, uh, can't wait to dig into this book. As you can tell, it's pretty fucking thick. I forgot exactly how many pages I said this was. But it looks like a Pulse Video printed this and Severn Video just, uh, Severn Video, <laughs> Severn Films collaborated with them. Uh, to put the book out. This is by Claude Gallard. So yeah. That's pretty cool. They did. They wrapped that saran tight. The, the, the saran wrap on here. Fucking tight though. But yeah guys. Hopefully you can see that really good. Uh, very glad to get this. I uh, always look. Especially anything to do with film or anything like that. 
I still collect magazines for fuck's sake, especially like you know, Fangoria's and all kinds of shit. So anything related with film, I love to have. Um, I do I, when I'm not watching movies. I do read a lot. So you would think I'd be able to pronounce words a lot fucking more fluently than I do, especially when it comes to Italian names, but holy fuck. Um, yeah. Do, 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 do. I don't want to read the whole back of that, but guys, if you do want to read it, please feel free to read it. Pause that right there. Like I said, guys, there's the uh, the theatrical posters for the three films I mentioned earlier. Um, so yeah, um, I have... Uh, I've watched a lot of YouTubers um, review this book and everything. Everybody seems to be eating this fucking thing up. Like I said, it was a really hot ticket for uh, the Severn Nukes, the Mid-Year Cell. This fucking book went fast. I do know that the book that they did for this year, uh, this year the book that they did for the uh, the Black Friday Cell that just ended was the, uh, the Cannibal Holocaust book. And I believe that was an, um, it was already a book. But they um, they got the uh, the author to uh, expand the book by adding like I think it's like eighteen pages to it. So uh, that book is definitely exclusive to Severn. I do hope they press more up and sell them. Um, I think the book by itself, the Cannibal Holocaust book I'm talking about for this past sell, I think it was forty five dollars by itself. And you also you could get it I think if you bought the Everything bundle, which was like three hundred some bucks. Trust me, guys, I didn't get that, and I didn't get the book by itself for $45. I debated on it, and I thought about it, and I probably should have fucking got it, to be honest with you, but it sold out before I really had a chance to think about it. So, But I kind of knew it was going to sell out, just like this one did. So anyway, there that is. After the World Ends, hardback book. That really fucking sucks that they sent me the slipcover, but not the fucking movie. I'd rather them send me the movie and forgot the slipcover. Fuck. It is what it is. Hmm, what are we going to go with next? Let me see here. Let me look at my pictures. We'll go with this one. All right, guys, this is the July. Uh, yeah, because that would be the third title right there that they didn't fucking send me for that bundle, so that's done. All right, guys, so here it is. Here's the July 2021 Blu-ray bundle. Um, this is limited edition, 2,000 units only, which I can probably tell you this is bullshit. Uh, with bonus CD soundtrack, music by David Davison, Captain Sensible, and more. This is a film by Gabriel Bartalis. This is Skin Deep. Um, I was gonna grab this during the uh, Severn Nukes the Mid Year sale, but it was you know it's full price and um, the bundle that you know the other two movies that this came with didn't objection. But anyway, so I'm kind of glad I held off for the bundle. Got to save a few bucks and hey, I got some shit to watch while I wait for my Black Friday order. Uh, a gore lover's dream come true. This is what old school horror is all about. It offers monsters, tons of kills, and some of the most eccentric scenes in the entire genre. That's a bold fucking statement right there. But anyway, Morbidly Beautiful said that. Uh, worldwide premiere of the unrated version with all new special features plus the soundtrack CD. It's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre meets Brain Damage. Holy fuck. I think if the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Brain Damage had a fucking baby. Wow. Alright. Uh, Bartol Bartolis Barrels Bartle. I don't even know that fucking word. Learn to read. Uh, barrels through con convention. I can barely fucking see with that light. Uh, deconstructs all that is considered normal and concocts surreal imagery of a world gone mad, says Film Threat. Uh, guys, this is color from 2003. Wow, okay. Hmm. It's from 2003, English, 98 minutes. Guys, this is ABC All Region. Uh, let's see what we got here. Deep cuts. A look back with writer, producer, director Gabe Bartalas, actors Jason Dugri and Caroline Brandt, and weapons mechanist. Oh, weapons machinist Jake Lee. Audio commentary with cast and crew. Archival making of featurette. Trailer bonus disc soundtrack CD. All right. So fuck yeah. I can tell you that cover looks fucking wicked. I can tell you that. I didn't know the movie was uh, from uh, 2003 though. So. Relatively modern. Uh, the stills that I see on the back looks completely fucking bonkers, too. So, guys, I don't know if you can see that. I'm sorry for that glare. Fuck. There we go. Maybe you can see it a little bit better there. So, yeah, that is skin deep. So, there that one is. That's the first one of the July 2021 pack. What's the next one? There? We'll go with this one. Uh, here we go right here. This is the next one up. This is uh, Born for Hell. Um, I'm going to read the names on that. Oh, my battery's about to die on the phone. Uh, directed by Dennis Herricks. 
Uh, hmm. Oh, I remember I watched the trailer for this. I just don't remember shit. Uh, anyways, color from 1975, English and French, 91 minutes. Guys, this is A, B, and C all region. Holy fuck, there's a ton of special features on here. Uh, okay, anyway, let's read some of the write-ups. Uh, truly intense and shocking, a nightmare's trip into the heart of human darkness that will haunt your mind for a good while, says Cinematic Shocks. U.S. Blu-ray premiere of the director's cut with all new special features. Depraved and demented. This sick little number features a strong lead performance, a provocative statement, and excellent direction, says Grindhouse Database. Oh, guys, there's a ton of fucking special features on here. Uh, I just want to look at them right quick. Uh, the Other Side of the Mirror, Interview with Actor, Nightmare in Chicago, Remembering the Richard Speck Murders. Holy fuck, that was a serial killer. I think I just watched a movie on him not too long ago. Well, betraying him. Uh, yeah, Richard Speck, I believe. I think he's the one who broke into, like, the college dorms and, like, raped and murdered a bunch of people. Uh, a bunch of co-eds and shit. Uh, let's see. Remembering the Richard Speck murders with filmmakers John McNaughton and Gary Sherman. A New Kind of Crime, the Richard Speck story with Once Upon a Crime podcaster Esther Ludlow. What the fuck is, is this another movie, like, based on fucking Richard Speck? This says from 1975. When did, when did that shit take place with Richard Speck? Uh, bombing Here, Shooting There, video essay by filmmaker Chris O'Neill, artist Joe Coleman on Richard Speck. God damn. Uh, Inside the Auditorium with Joe Coleman, Naked Massacre, U.S. video release cut, Italian trailer. God, it, a fucking special features list on that. Let's look at that. Just whoosh. And a ton of them is about fucking Richard Speck. So I'm assuming that this has definitely got some shit going on with it with Richard Speck. I don't know if this is like, it says from 1975, I thought that shit happened in the 80s or something, I don't know. Anyway guys, that's Born for Hell, that's the second title in the July bundle. Now this one coming up right here, god damn was this recommended highly to me, and I didn't pick it up during the uh, the Sever Nukes, the mid-year sale, and I've heard, I've heard countless fucking people now telling me, it's like, you bought all that shit but you didn't buy this movie? This is like the best film fucking Severn has put out so far, but I do have it now, um, I do keep in mind that a lot of people's uh, uh, suggestions sometimes, you know, of course everything's subjective. You know, good and bad is always subjective. I can't wait to check it out, though. I am fucking hyped for it. I do have, uh, after all, everything that I fucking heard and all the criticism I got for not buying this movie during that fucking last sale, um, this thing better be great. Um, that is, this is the last uh, title in the July bundle. That is none other than Siege. Oh, uh, let's see. I did look up for. I did look at the trailer for this, and holy fuck, the trailer does. It looks fucking great. I was watching the Severance Seller special. There was a director on there. Um, it was actually uh, it was two uh, two two different filmmakers in there at once, and the younger guy pulled this uh, film off the shelf, and he was just praising the fuck out of this thing. Um, totally unique and truly disturbing. Uh, few Canadian films are as unrelentingly gri gripping as Siege. All right, then. And, guys, unfortunately, I can't see anything else because it is wrapped and it's got the slip cover on it. I don't want to waste a whole lot of you guys' time with that shit. Um, I'm pretty sure if you're watching this video and you do collect vinegar syndrome shit and you buy from them, you this is probably the first thing you fucking bought and you're probably like, why'd you wait six months later to buy this? Uh, let's see here. Uh, directed by Paul Donovan and Mara O'Connell. Hmm... I don't really know any of the names on the back of this, but I can barely fucking see them as it is, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, can't wait to fucking pop this in and watch it. And I'll be honest with you, I'll probably end up... This is probably the first one I'll fucking open to uh, pop in the player to see what all the hype is about. So, guys, that is the third and final film from the July 2021 bundle. Let me see what the fuck else I got left right there. Oh, you know what they did? Holy fuck. I just noticed that. So, yeah, I did. I ordered the, the Midnight Slipcover by itself for five bucks. But let me just make sure I know what the fuck I'm talking about here. So, I ordered the September 2021 Blu-ray bundle. And they did. They sent me A Day of Judgment and The Fourth Victim. But Midnight was supposed to be the third film in that bundle. For some reason, instead of sending me Midnight, they sent me Beyond Darkness. Because I know for a fact... I didn't order this fucking movie because I got my list right there. Uh, so yeah, they kind of fucked up and uh, threw Beyond Darkness in there. So, 
Ah, what the fuck? I mean, no, these are I know these are fucking going out of stock. And I, actually, this is the limited edition because it's got the CD soundtrack. So I guess I didn't make out too fucking bad. I guess, although I do already have this from Screen Factory, but I think this has got some different fucking special features. There was a slipcover for this one. This was one of the surprise titles that they uh, announced during the uh, Seven Nukes the Mid Year sale. And there was a fucking slip cover for this, and I'm trying to think. I think it was also known as Evil Dead 5 or some shit. And I saw that slip cover, and everybody was buying that shit up like crazy. I don't give a fuck about that slip cover, though. Um, I have had this now. I think it's in uh, the Screen Factory double feature uh, Blu-ray um, that I have up there. Uh, Beyond Darkness is one of the films that's in there. I forgot what the other one is. It's up there on the shelf, though. I just can't think of it because I haven't had fucking sleep in forever. Uh, but yeah. So, hey, fuck it. I mean, they did they did fuck up and they forgot to send me fucking Midnight. I'm just thinking they probably pulled this one off the shelf by mistake. And I guarantee you with all the shit that I ordered from them, especially with this big-ass box and much as it costs, I'm sure I can email them and just say, hey, you sent me everything, but unfortunately you forgot to send me Midnight. And I'm sure they'll fucking send it right out my way. Um, as much as everybody wants to bitch about Severn, yes, I agree. That fucking website is janky as fuck during the sale. Oh, my God, they need to take their money whatever they can do and fix that goddamn website so we can all get on there when those sales go live. We're all very excited to hop on there. If you're, any, if, if you're watching this video and you do collect Severin, I assure you your excitement is just like mine when it comes to those sales. You want to get on there. You want to see what they got to offer. Um, see what kind of limited edition stock they got still available. Blah, 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 blah. See what's discounted and, you know, fucking mark down real low. And then you get on there and the website's fucked up and it takes forever for it to finally smooth out and traffic to die down and all that shit. Um, that's, you know, that's one thing they really need to work on. But other than that, I've had great experiences with Severn's cu customer service. Um, during the Severn Nukes the Mid-Year sale, I got two titles from them. One was the Blu-ray release of The Sinful Dwarf and another one was the Video Nasties. I think it was Volume 1. Uh, inside that case, there's three discs. Disc two was scratched, and also the Blu-ray disc inside the Simple Dwarf was scratched. I emailed Severin. I gave them my order number. I said, hello, my name is Johnny Walker. This is my order number. Um, I got all my stuff in. Everything's fine, but I just happened to open up these two releases, and there's scratched discs inside of them. Um, please let me know if you need me to send these back to you so you can send me... Um, uh, just send me a, a new copy altogether with discs that are not scratched. They emailed me right back and said, hey, no fucking problem. Keep what you got. Don't send it back. We will send you uh, the exact disc that you need. And sure enough, I think it was like a week later, I opened up my fucking mailbox. There's the uh, the Video Nasties uh, Volume 1 Disc 2. Um, I said Grindhouse. It was the Video Nasty set. Um, there it was, the Disc 2 DVD. Um, that was in there, perfectly fine. Uh, spotless. And also the Sinful Dwarf Blu-ray. And they turn around like a week and done that shit. And they even emailed me back just to make sure I got the fucking disc. Which most companies would be like, I don't give a fuck. If he didn't get them, I'm sure he'll say something later. Nope. They sent me a fucking email. Was just making sure that I got my got my disc. And uh, was I happy with my purchase? And I was like, fucking absolutely. So that's great fucking customer service. I know it's, uh, it's pretty easy to sit back and bitch and moan and complain about this, this, and that. But we live in a great time for physical media. I do love the hell out of Severn. I died. I've been, especially this year for 2021, I don't know what bug bit me, but holy fuck, I've been dive, diving into their their catalog. And it's not just the fact that, hey, I just want to buy, you know, I'm just fucking jizzing all over, just fucking, oh, it's a Severn release and I got to have it. They just have fucking titles in there that's, uh, it just fucking captivates my attention and I, I love watching bizarre shit. I don't know what it is. It's probably just my taste in watching fucked up weirdness and I'll admit some of it's bad, but even some of the shit that I've seen is bad. I've actually really appreciated it for what it was. There is one on that shelf that I'm thinking of right now that I did watch when I got my Severn Nukes to Meteor Cell. I took a gamble and I bought this weird fucking movie. Um, it's called Portraits of a Family or some shit or Portraits of a Serial Killer or something like that. It's kind of like an anthology. There's like three different three or four different stories in this movie. Um, I was watching that in the living room with my wife. Um, I could have definitely picked that a different movie that night, and it probably would have been a little <laughs> probably would have been about a little bit better of a night. I think we were coming off a long work week. We were already stressed out, 
and shit like that. And I'll be honest with you, either one of us was not feeling that movie. As soon as the credits rolled, I didn't even bother looking through the special features. I took the disc out, put it right back in case, put it on the shelf, and I was like, I'll definitely be trading that or selling it, doing whatever the fuck. Um, that is one that I have watched that I just, that's definitely not my style. Um, I can, to a certain point, appreciate it for what it is. But there's just no, absolutely no substance there whatsoever. Um, but yeah, I don't know what it is, man. Just, you know, if I, if I had to say honestly, when it comes to like Vinegar Syndrome and Severin, they have some of the most craziest shit in their catalog that you, that myself and I'm sure a ton of other people out there just can't help but go, what the fuck, man? I gotta check this out and see what this is all about. Um, I do realize that there is a huge number of people who only buy this shit from these companies because it's either a collector's edition or a limited edition or it's got a slip cover or something that's gonna make them feel complete just because it's very limited and they only feel fulfilled if they get one of them for themselves um that's just nothing like that for me if i, if I fucking if i'm gonna chase it down i'm gonna buy it i'm gonna watch the fuck out of it if i don't like it i'm not holding it on my fucking shelf that's for sure um, trade that shit out for something else I can explore, but you know that's just me. There's everybody's got different collectors, uh, uh, collector agendas and shit like that, and I try to respect it as much as I can. So hey, it's you know, it's everybody you know, whoever wants to just buy that shit to not even watch the movies and they're just buying it just because there's a piece of cardboard on it. And, hey, kudos to you. I'm glad you got the money just to do that shit. But um, if I had to fucking say one thing, uh, instead of putting those things on your shelf and never opening them up and you just feel fulfilled by putting them on your shelf because they have a slip cover on it, fucking take the cellophane off those fucking things and watch the movie. You'll probably fall in love with the shit. Leave it on the shelf just for collector's purposes. That's a fucking waste of space, time, and money to me. Uh. Alright guys, I'll stop ranting with some bullshit. Oh, come on. It was right there on the screen. I fucked it up. Here we go. All right, guys. So this is the June bundle right here coming up. Let's start off with this one because it is number one. I can't wait to watch these fucking movies. Just the artwork alone is like, holy shit. I watched the trailers too. God damn, they look so bad, but it looks so good. Um, here it is right here. Here's the first one up. That is Strike Commander. Strike Commando. I said Commander. Uh, I need some sleep. Anyway. Let's see what we got here. Oh, this is from 1986, English and Italian. We got the extended cut at 102 minutes, and they also put in the theatrical cut, which is 92 minutes. So there's a 10-minute difference, guys. I hope this stack of shit is not blocking the camera. We will make these stacks up. We got to you. Anyway. All right, I think we're good. Let's see what we got. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Absolutely batshit insane. To say that mayhem ensues would be a serious understatement. Reb fucking Brown is a worldwide treasure. Who's Reb Brown? Okay. Somebody apparently. Well, 411 Mania definitely loves the hell out of Reb Brown, whoever that is. The theatrical and extended cuts of Bruno Bruno Matei's legendary Rambo ripoff. Fuck, man, I love Rambo, man. <clears throat> I bet you there's been a ton of fucking ripoffs just of trying to even get half the success Rambo, the fucking Rambo films got. Uh, let's see what we got here. See this movie, a great action field ride that gets better with each viewing. Best going ape, <laughs> best going ape shit ending to a movie ever. I'm fucking loving the taglines on this shit. God, this is another one. I'm going to put this one towards the top two. Uh, fucking Siege, and then I'll go for these, I guess. Uh, it says explosive action. Uh, special features guy. We got a uh, war machine interview with screenwriter Claudia Fergazzi. Fergazzo? Fergazzo. Oh, fuck, man. I gotta learn to read. Um, All Quiet on the Philippine Front. Interview with co-writer Rosella Drudy. In production promo trailer. Guys, this is Region A Lock. So, just giving you a heads up. I will hold that up on the back right here so you can see it somewhat. If I turn that light, maybe just a little bit. It puts one big fucking glare on it. Guys, I hope you can see that, though. Feel free to pause. Don't strain your fucking eyeballs and get a headache, though, just because of me. But yeah, guys, that is Strike Commando from 1986. And I love the fact that they put both cuts in there. That is fucking awesome. That's a 10-minute difference right there between the extended and the theatrical. So, that's fucking awesome. There we go again, putting shit in front of the camera. All right, guys. So, of course, they did Strike Commando for the first title for the June Bundle. And, of course, they put Strike Commando 2 in there as well. 
Oh man, the fucking artwork on these just take a moment just to really let that set in. That is, I, I gotta say, that's fucking beautiful. Uh, it seems like these would have been part of the uh, that Marauders bundle. Uh, there's some fucking Sefer definitely had some fucking action looking films. Uh, Raiders of Atlantis, Endgame, Warriors of the Year 2072, which I know those are pop, uh, post apocalyptic and these are like Rambo ripoffs, but holy shit. What a hell of a package that they put together. And that was June. I forgot what Marauders... I forgot what I said. The Marauders Bundle. What month that is. It's just called the Marauders Bundle. Uh, but I forgot what month that was. Alright. So here we go, guys. Let's get back to this. Strike Commando 2. Truly everything a fan could hope for. The perfect combination of replacement star, legendary slumming actor, and jungle explosions. It says Monster Hunter. Hold on Let's read that one more time. Truly everything a fan could hope for. The perfect combination of replacement star, legendary slumming actor, and jungle explosions. All right. The worldwide disc premiere of, uh, I just said his name a while ago, uh, Bruno Mattei. Okay. Uh, the, world, the worldwide disc premiere of Mattei's infamous exploding hut sequel includes theatrical and extended, and extended cut. So again, on this one, they did the fucking theatrical and the extended cut. Uh, Bruno Mattei is an ex exploitation god. This film should be called Raiders Romancing the Lost Stone Ark. First Blood Part 2, says Video Junkie. <laughs> Listen to that shit one more time in case you missed it. Bruno Mattei is an exploitation god. This film should be called Raiders Romancing the Lost Stone Ark. First Blood Part 2. Way to fucking go. And guys, this one is uh, from 1988, English and Italian. The extended cut is 96 minutes. The theatrical cut is 90 minutes. So we got a 6 minute difference on this one and a 10 minute difference on this one. Uh, what was I also going to... I was going to say too, both of these are region A locks. So just to give you guys a heads up, uh, this one was 1986 for the first one. And this one was released in 1988. So two years later, there you go. And they probably started shooting this in 1987, uh, a year after this one was released. I'm assuming the only reason why a part two was made because this one was at least somewhat successful. If I had to say. Uh, special features. Gorilla Zone. Interview with screenwriter Claudia Fergazzi. So we definitely got an inter another interview with that same person. Uh, Michael Ransom strikes back. Interview with actors Brent Huff. Which, did we get that on there? Mm, no. Uh, man, trailer. I wonder if they got the same guy. That looks like a different guy. It definitely does look like a different guy. Hmm. Well, shit. But it was uh, directed by Vincent Don. Both of them. So, same director. So, fuck yeah, man. Hmm. I'm just looking, guys. I'm fucking so captivated by these. Oh, my God. I'm looking at the names just for similarities. God, man, I... I really do hope this has got some fucking cheese in it because I'm telling you right now, the fucking cover art alone is just, it's just crying out to me. It's like, open me now and we'll just fucking watch this. You're going to love it. I just, I really do hope, I hope this is, hope this is, it is definitely from like that era to, um, especially when like fucking people died making action movies. I hate to say that to be like such a shitty person, but we all know those were like some of the best movies ever. I'm just hoping this has like a good, you know, they call it, they purposely on the back of these call them like a uh, Rambo ripoffs. I'm really hoping though that there's like just this fucking overwhelming, just oozing fucking barrel of cheese that goes along with these. So yeah, guys, uh, I would definitely say I'm fucking definitely happy with that June bundle and I'm not even done with it yet. It's the first two titles out of it and there's one more. Uh, but yeah, Strike Commando 1 and 2. Holy fuck. Can't wait to get into those. Oh, God, I'm getting so tired. My brain is just trying to shut off. It's 10.15. Uh, let's see what we got the last up for... Oh, it's got nudity on it, so I have to be a little careful with this one. Uh, this is the third and final film from the June 2021 Blu-ray bundle. This is Invaders of the Lost Gold. I'll try to cover up, cover up the nips. Sorry, fellas. Hey, if you want to see the cover, though, I'm sure it's online somewhere. So knock yourself out. Uh, let's see what we got here. I'll show you the back of it right there as well. This does have a slip cover on it. Just like the other one, guys. I don't want to waste all you guys' fucking time opening these things up. Was it? Siege had a slip on it. And that's it. See, just to show you that I'm not a fucking slip cover junkie and I just only buy movies that only have slip covers. Nah, most of the majority of these are like 12 movies here and only two of them have fucking slips on them. 
Um, and, but yeah, I did buy the uh, the Midnight Slip by itself. It was only five bucks. Too bad they you know sent me fucking Beyond Darkness instead of the fucking movie though. A uh, delicious piece of atrocity cake. Says function. Oh, uh, let's see what we got. Stuart Whitman, Edmund Purden in Invasion of the Lost Gold. I'm trying to look at the names on the back of this, and holy fuck, do I not know any of these people? Directed by Alan Birkinshaw, uh, produced by Spectaculars Trading Company Limited. Uh, yeah, I don't know jack shit about it. Um, of course, you know, I do, before I take the plunge, uh, I always do look at trailers. I don't really read reviews that much, because they fucking give away too much, uh, especially some of these fucking reviewers online on YouTube, Jesus Christ, they'll tell you the fucking ending first thing as soon as you click on the video, but, um, I do have a couple of trusted sources that I'm like, hey, like, you know, I know you collect Severn shit, you like a lot of their titles, and you know more, a hell of a lot more about exploitation than I do, and these certain kind of genre films, and, um, uh, and stuff like that, you know, I, you know, it's hit or miss sometimes, I always usually get like, hey, like, you know, it's a hit or miss whether you're going to like that or not, 50-50, um, definitely give it a shot though, if you don't like it, there's always a market out there you can trade for, or sell it, blah, 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 um, I don't purposely just buy a bunch of fucking films that I don't know of, just to turn around and sell them to try to make a profit or anything like that, that's the last thing I do, I'd rather trade than sell, but, uh, I'm always eager to get into some shit that I've never seen before and just take that fucking, just that blind dive into the unknown, um, hoping to strike gold because there's no other better feeling than that. So guys, we're going to get into this. Um, yeah, I'll hold those up right quick because I believe that is all the movies now. Uh, yeah, I will put those on top because that is Severin's little fuck up right there, which, hey, ain't no hating it though. They sit, at least they didn't fucking forget the movie Midnight and not send me anything at all. But yeah, guys, there we go right there. I'm sorry for that fucking glare on those wraps right there. But that is Warriors of the Year 2072, Raiders of Atlantis, Endgame. I'm sorry, I can't see what that is. A Day of Judgment, The Fourth Victim, uh, Skin Deep, Invaders of the Lost Gold, Born for Hell, Strike Commando 1 and 2, Siege and Beyond Darkness, which... They sit by mistake, so, you know, just pretend that's actually, that's supposed to be uh, the Severn release of Midnight right there, which, hey, no problem, because believe it or not, this actually is the limited edition right here. You know what, I could have at least kind of went over this too, because I'm going to fucking keep it. It's not like I want to send it back. Um, Severn will fucking, I know that for a fact, they'll just fucking send me Midnight, but this is Beyond Darkness. I do have the Screen Factory release of this. Claudia Fergasso's most entertaining masterwork. Uh, fun, fast-paced, supernatural horror. Fergasi reveals himself as a popular visionary with all new special features and soundtrack CDs. So already, there's all new special features that's been made just for this release. So I know this, at least the features themselves are going to differ from my Screen Factory release. And I'll be honest with you, on those double feature Screen Factory releases, there's usually never, um, if any, special features on there. There's a few that has some on there. I think, you know, like Blackula had a few on there. Of uh, course, uh, Terror Vision and... Uh, Fucking was that a, a video did they you know that was a Terror Vision had to have some fucking special features. I can't believe they didn't turn that into a collector's edition. That's a huge fucking mistake on Screen Factory's part. They should have definitely made that a collector's edition. I'll be honest with you. I would love to see them take that fucking movie and if there's anything they're gonna do in 4K UHD as a collector's edition with a fucking poster and some swag to come with it, let it be Terror Vision. Cause goddamn, I love that movie. Ah, oh, let's see here. Yes, it goes nuts and e. <laughs> An eclectic dish featuring feverish burst of madness of a tradition that completely warped normal standards, says Oh the Horror. Guys, this is color from 1990, 93 minutes. This is Region A Locked. Special features is Beyond Possession, interview with director, co-writer Claudia Fergazzi. Uh, the Devil in Mrs. Druddy, interview with co-writer Rosella Drudy. I swear I just saw that name on another one in that stack. Uh, Son of the Cross, interview with actor David Brandon, trailer, and of course the bonus CD soundtrack. So yeah, hey man, fuck it. Is what it is. And like I said, at least they didn't fuck up and not send me, you know, uh, forget Midnight and that was it. I'm just fucking out of a movie. I will watch that for sure, definitely. So glad to fucking have it. So at least that was a mistake I'm not really all that bad out of shape anymore about. Uh... But definitely got to remember to fucking email them, though, so they can send me midnight. Well, 
let's see what we got. Let's make sure ain't nothing here. Guys, here comes a bunch of fucking merch. I hope, guys, if I do run out of memory buying chance on this because I forgot to delete some old videos before I started this up, if that happens, I will do a part two to this. Uh, this I'll just delete a video from previously that I've already uploaded and I'll begin part two. So the video shuts off just for some fucked up reason. Don't worry. I will get it back on there and go. Oh, this is where I'm going to have to probably pay a little bit of attention to because I did count out how many I did get. Oh, uh, shit. So that was 12 movies, right? Let me just make sure, guys. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12, even though that one was supposed to be midnight, but I got Beyond Beyond Darkness instead. I did get the midnight slip cover, however, so that's that. I got five cases of the double disc. I did open those. Those are all double discs, so got those five. What else? This is it. This is the last of the stuff right here, and there's a good bit of stuff. I went crazy on some of the merch. Mm -hmm. Guys, I hope you're enjoying the video so far. I know it's long as fuck. We're at an hour and five minutes, almost an hour and six minutes. If you made it this far, just hit me up in the comment section and just say seven rules. Um, I love their fucking shit, man. I love the titles that they fucking have the balls to fucking throw out there on the market. Holy shit. All right, guys. So I am a sucker for the merch part of Severin. Guys, if you are familiar with Severin, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I know a lot of you probably look at their site and you just go, I don't really need any of that shit. Uh, me, I like to buy some miscellaneous kind of shit, uh, especially when I buy a bunch of movies just to, you know, fluff the box up, you'd say. Um... You know, I like swag, man. Uh, as you can fucking tell, like, uh, during that uh, Seven Nukes to Mid Yourself, fuck, I must have bought, like, eight shirts, uh, fucking handfuls of stickers, uh, not to mention all the fucking Blu-rays and DVDs, which I think I ordered, like, 40 fucking movies during that sale. Um, fuck, I even got the Cruel Jaws toilet seat cover, for fuck's sakes. I uh, got some patches over there, which I know I got the, uh, oh, fuck. Uh, what was that? The fucking uh, St. Bernard patch. Um, fuck, what else did I get? I got some shit. I was trying to think of something else, too, because I know I, I bought some books from them, too, on my last order. I think what was that, uh, Combat Shock had a book. They even had some extra slipcovers that they found in the warehouse that was signed by the director left over. I bought that. Jack the Ripper, Bloody Moon slipcover, fucking Devil's Honey. They found, like, a couple of slipcovers for movies I already had, so I was like, fuck yeah, this is the perfect time to grab them. It was just a few bucks. Um, yeah, guys, and there was marking them fucking DVDs down for like three dollars a piece. Um, some of them are, I think a few of them are like five bucks. I went on there and fucking made a bunch of orders. I was one big ass order because I ordered doubles of everything so me and my buddy Cody could fucking uh get into some of these together. What better way than buying some blind buys, especially saving a lot of money when you're only pumping like three or five bucks, three to five dollars uh per title. Most of them were three though. Uh, I'm trying to think what else did I fucking get. I got some promotional vampires fangs from the Al Adamson. I think that's like a blood and flesh thing or something. It's just like a dollar or something. Um, I did get the uh, the Severin and the Inner Vision uh, enamel pins. Fuck, I even got their hat for fuck's sakes. Uh, their snapback hat. I think I got two black ones. I meant to order a black one. In a, uh, they ha also have a white one with a black logo on it. I just fucked up and put two of these in the same box for some reason. Uh, what else? Yeah, guys, I, I do. I, I, I love a lot of their shit. I love the way they do their website, too, with a lot of merch. I wish Vinegar Syndrome, which they do, they have a little bit of merch. You know, they have shirts, they have pins and shit like that. But when it comes to, like, this miscellaneous kind of merch, I would definitely say Severn kind of, they know what they're doing with it because they make sure they offer something for everybody, which does not say Vinegar Syndrome doesn't. I'm just, I think when it comes to quantity and just how much it spreads out, when it comes to the merch side of it, I think Severn, um, holds the torch to that for sure. Um, if you look at, you know, if you look at other companies, especially like Screen Factory, Arrow Video, Eighty Eight Films, um, Eureka and stuff like that, these these places really don't carry merch of any kind whatsoever. It's kind of like you know they release the movies. You might you know you get posters with it, which is fucking cool. Which I bought posters from fucking Severn. Uh, bought the Christopher Lee poster that came with the uh, the Euro Crypt set. Bought that from me and my buddy Cody. Um, I even bought the Night of the Demon poster from this sale coming up. I think it was like eight bucks. Also, uh, Nosferatu, Nosferatu in Venice, the Klaus Kinski film. I also bought that with the fucking poster. So, yeah, as, as you can tell, I'm a fucking whore for it. I, I, I do. I love it. Um, like I said, I just recently bought the, uh, the pins, the Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing pin. 
I had those, I took them out of the box when I first got them. I bought two a piece because I sent, uh, I sent both of them to my buddy Cody as well. Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing was like our fucking legends of Hammer. And uh, even, I, he made a video and I saw him take them out of the box and he was just sitting there looking at them. I know he was dumbstruck by them. The quality of those things are fucking great. The presentation, the whole nine yards. And the best thing about it is those fucking things usually sell for 12 bucks a piece and I got them 50% off because they marked down every fucking pin on their website and there's a ton of them. They marked them all 50% off except for one, which was the Barber Steel pin that I had to pay full price for. And I assure you that motherfucker should be in this box, but we're going to go through it. <laughs> Guys, I am going to have to look at my order right quick to make sure I'm pulling out everything that I'm supposed to have. Oh, fuck. I don't even know where that's at. Guys, just bear with me. Just bear with me. Mm, all right. Starting that. All right, guys. The very first pin I'm going to pull out right here is the Severn Films Hall of Fame. This is the this is number 13. That is the Al Adamson pin right there. I'll be honest with you. I only have a couple movies by Al Adamson. Um, I did not splurge and buy that big-ass uh, Al Adamson box set that Severn came out with. Uh, knowing what I know now, yeah, I should have definitely fucking jumped on that. Because now it's on eBay for crazy money. Um, I know that thing's not for everybody. I know, I guarantee you, there's, even though there's a shitload of films in there, you know, there's probably going to be a couple in there that's just complete fucking garbage for all I know. But, uh, but yeah, I wouldn't mind, uh, I wouldn't mind having that box set in my fucking hand to really go through his filmography. And, uh, Severn is the only company that I know that's really put out that many films in one box set and, uh, celebrated his filmography. But there's the back of it. I'll let you guys see that right there. Was that, uh, Pixel Elixir? I think they, um, that's, uh, that, uh, they, uh, I think they're really uh, known for making enamel pins. So that's cool that Severin uh, partnered with them to do pins. So there you go, guys. There's the Al Adamson pin. We'll try to go through these kind of quick. I don't want to hold anybody up. Um, you know you've already been here fucking for an hour and 11 minutes. Uh, just making sure this one wasn't fucked up or anything. But this is uh, the Night Killer collectible enamel pin. Got this one right here. Uh, you know what, guys? I'll... Try to be a little punctual about these, just to show you that I didn't fucking give some crazy. Uh, this one right here was only five bucks. It's usually like ten, so got a half off. That one right there was five bucks. What was this one? Where the fuck is it at? Uh, I don't want to take so much time telling you guys what I paid for the shit. Cause it per okay, yep, yeah, this one right here, I'll add them some one. Five bucks. Usually runs ten or twelve bucks. Fifty percent off. Next one up, guys. This is the Joe D'Amato pin. This is the Severn Hall of Fame, number five. So got that one right there. I'll be honest with you, the Al Adamson and the Night Killer one looks good. This one's kind of, I mean, it's detailed, but it's just not really big. I don't like the other ones. I'm telling you, that Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing pins, holy fuck. Those things are gorgeous. Uh, th those up there, th they're hanging right there on my shelf. I'm trying to make a big display of all the pins uh, under my Severn shelf. And I can tell you that those are probably going to remain in the very forefront starting on the shelf because I don't think nothing's going to beat those, to be honest with you. But that is Joe D'Amato. There's a lot of fans for that guy. Here's the one I had to pay full price for, and it was 12 bucks. and holy shit, I can see why this thing is beautiful. Oh, I love Barbara Steele. Okay, a Severn Hall of Fame. Barbara Steele, number 21. There you go, guys. Soak that shit in. God almighty, I love Barbara Steele. And that fucking pen's great. That thing is awesome. That camera's not doing it no justice, I can tell you that shit. That thing is fucking beautiful. Look at there. Nice little picture over on the back right there. Uh, let me see, guys. I might have just whizzed right through that. So on the back of that one right there, the Joe D'Amato. Holy shit, what is that? Hmm, okay. Whatever the fuck that is, there's two people on the back. I can't make out what the fuck it is. Let's see the Al Adamson. That just says Pixel, Pixel Elixir on the back. Night Killer, same thing. So that is really cool for that barber still. That is a... You know, even though the pins are sticking through the fucking image, cool they put the picture on the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, guys, that's one I did have to pay full price for because it is brand new. That came with the bundle. Um, that was the uh, Jess Franco bundle that just literally just released. That was, oh, fuck, an angel for Satan, Franco Noir, and it came with this pin also. So you got those two Blu-ray movies and this pin. Um, I didn't buy that bundle because I bought... And Angel for Satan was at Orbit DVD because I couldn't just let it sit there on the shelf. So I went ahead and scooped that up. I did find Franco Noir for a really good price. Brand new, sealed on eBay. I think I paid like 13 bucks for that thing and it's on the way here. 
So I got that. And now I got the pin, so that bundle is officially completed. Next up, guys, is the Severn Films Hall of Fame number 11 from Pixel Elixir and Severn. This is Donald Pleasant's. Fuck, that is a great pin. I love that shit, man. Guys, I'm going to try to hold that up. Oh, fuck, man, I'm, I'm hoping that light's doing some justice for those. Let's see what we got. No picture on the back. I'm trying to set these up so that way I can look at them at the end. Fuck, dude, that's a great one, too. Um, I ordered this movie. Sadly, I don't even have this movie, but I just ordered it for the Severn Black Friday sale. So hopefully I'll have that pretty soon. I know everybody's seen this fucking movie except for me. Um, but I will change that as soon as that box comes in. I'm going to try to pronounce this. You know, no, I'm going to fuck this up, and I've seen countless people fuck this up as well. So shoot me. Um, anthropophagus, anthropophagus, guys, that's fucking great, that dude's like literally throwing up his fucking entrails on a pin, there is an image on the back there too, uh, looks like more of a sideways image, I would say, I'm not sure, but I'll hold it up there, maybe you guys can see it, even with all that fucking glare from that ring light, yeah, guys, that is nice, that's a lot of detail on that, love that shit, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, here we go right here. Damn, I thought this would be a little bit of a bigger pin. It's, I would say that they probably need to kind of give somebody, they need to take like a, like reference photos, like sit this shit beside like a half dollar piece or something. Uh, this is a very small fucking pin. Ah, uh, fuck, I forgot that. You know what, guys? I'll, I'll tell you right now, like all those pins were like either, I think they were like five or six bucks a piece. I'll look through it right quick. Um... Yeah, all of them are five or six bucks a piece with the exception of Barbara Steel, which I had to pay full price for that, which was $12, just because it just came out. So I got those pins for like fucking 50% off. What better time to get it? Uh, this is the Klaus Kinski pin. What's my fucking phone doing? Stop. Uh, and this was like fucking small. But anyways, this is the Severn, uh, Severn Hall of Fame enamel pin uh, of Klaus Kinski, number 14. I'm a little disappointed in that pin, to be honest with you. It is a double-studded pin right there, but it's pretty fucking small. I don't even really think it needed two on there. Holy shit, they overcompensated for that for some reason, because I'll be honest with you, that's like, uh, it's just a tad bit bigger than a quarter. So, but hey, fuck it, I got it. It's there. All right. Next up, guys, here we go. Ah, the... It didn't open, but it got dog-eared a little bit, so I have to hold it back a little bit so it don't curl over it. Here is the uh, the collectible enamel pin of Robo War. Um, I did pick up the limited edition with bonus CD soundtrack uh, Blu-ray deer in the Severn Nukes the Mid-Year sale. Went ahead and grab, grab the fucking pin. Really good price. Let's see what else we get. God, there's a bunch of these in here. Holy shit, man, that looks awesome. Oh, I love the background on that one. Holy fuck. I'm, I'm digging some of these, but damn. That Klaus Kinski one is a little disappointing. That's a little small. Love the detail on it. Just wish it was a little bit fucking bigger. Uh, stop bitching, Johnny. But this is the uh, the Severin uh, enamel pin for Beyond the Darkness. That is fucking awesome right there. I hope the background the pins are not just bleeding all together right there. But I assure you, that thing looks fucking great in person. Camera's not doing it justice probably. But I assure you, that is fucking awesome. I like that shit. Uh, the back of it, guys. Oh, let's see. What is it? Just Okay. So was this not Pixel Elixir? This is Boy, Boy Omega. Hmm. Okay. Let's keep going. What is that? Oh, they're stuck down in the box. I'm gonna have to make sure I don't leave none of this shit behind. What is that? Oh, this is not even in a um a wrap, like the little plastic wraps. Hmm. That's a first. But uh, here is the uh, Luigi Kazi um, Horror Hall of Fame pin. Which this is a Hall of Fame pin, and they don't even have it in one of those fucking plastic seal bags. I like those plastic seal bags. Hmm, I'm gonna have to figure out something. To, I'm gonna have to definitely put this in something. I'll find another one of those baggies, something resembling it. There you go, guys. A great artwork. Uh, this one right here, again, just kind of like that Klaus Kinski. It's a little bit bigger than a quarter, but it, it's not perfectly round because the actual the the molding of it uh, goes with the artwork, so it kind of points out. But I like the hell out of that. That looks really good. Got a lot of detail in that. Holy shit. So, hold it up there for you guys. That is Luigi Kazi. Let's see what else we got. Oh, here we go right here. Here's Severin's Hall of Fame number one. Um, 
enamel pin right here. I don't like this one. I don't know about that red glitter in the back, though. It didn't look that way in the picture, I don't think. Hmm. I like it, though. It's all right. This is uh, Lucio Fulci. There we go. What's on the back there? Some weird-ass design. That has to be from, uh, what is that, The Devil's Honey? Uh, which, I bought that one during the Severn Nukes to Mid-Year Sale. And um, I bought that, and then Severn put some, they found some slip covers that were in the warehouse that they had stumbled across a bunch of extras that they had boxed up, I'm assuming. And uh, they put them on their website, so I went ahead and bought the fucking slip cover that goes with it. If I'm not mistaken, that's the Lucio Fulci movie where, like, the dude's playing the fucking saxophone to the chick's vagina. So... If uh, you're a person who looks down on people who play the saxophone, I can tell you right now that guy got a piece of ass out of it. Okay. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Here is... Uh, I'll look this one up right quick. Uh, I'm surprised. Uh, this is another one right here that didn't uh, come with a, uh, a plastic bag on it. So, and I see another one right there without it. I wonder how they... Hmm. That's weird. I don't know how they... Because like the, uh, the Lucci Fulci came in bagged and that was like the first one. But then that's another Hall of Fame film, which was... I forgot what number that is. It's number nine. Yeah, the Luigi Cosi. It didn't come with a bag on it. Oh, well. I'm getting hung up on shit here, guys. But that is uh, the Beast right there. Enamel pin. Let's see what we got on the back. Uh, Psychodelic.com, I guess, is who did the pin. Let's see, yeah, the cardboard got a little crinkled right there. I'm going to have to flatten that back out. No big deal. Guys, I'm telling you right now, um, I don't put these like on my clothes or nothing like that. I do plan to take all of them, though. And on my severance shelf that I have running across my whole wall, I plan on taking all these pins and lining them up and tacking them right to the uh, uh, the baseline of the board right there just to decorate the shelf because those things do look fucking sweet. Here's another one right here. Damn it, this one got dog-eared. Oh, it's a Hall of Fame pin number two, Umberto Lindsay. This one definitely got dog-eared, which sucked because it did put a crease in it. Uh, I wish they would just put these in like a big Ziploc bag and send them and not just put them in there loose in the box. That's one thing that i definitely done different for this order if I was them. So I can't complain about that. There we go, guys. Umberto Lindsay. So, yeah, I'm glad I bought these pins while they were like half off. I, mm, I, would, have, I would definitely not have bought these things if they were full price. All right, guys, let me see this right here. <laughs> I bought some, some crazy weird shit. So I can't I'll look at it and see right quick. So I bought a replica of the Changeling. I'm sure I've seen this on the website. It's probably already bought this. Um, I had to have this. I love the hell out of the Changeling. That's a great-ass film. But it's kind of like a replica of the ball from the movie. I know I'm going to get glare off of that, so I'll try to hold it up right there. But it's got the movie title right there on one side. It's identical to the ball that George C. Scott uh, picks up down the stairs. I think the ball in the movie, though, it does look a little bit bigger. This fucking thing is solid, though. Like, you throw this shit at somebody, hit him in the fucking head, you'll knock him out. And, uh, great little Severn logo right there on the other uh, back of it. I know a lot of you are probably watching this going, dude, like, what the fuck are you even going to do with all this shit? It's just self, uh, shelf decorations, man. This is just, it's just fun shit to throw in a box. I think, it, what was this? Three, three bucks for that. About fucked up and just knocked over a soda and all kinds of shit. Uh, I think this was just like the fucking, <laughs> I don't know about this, uh, the Severin Brain Stress Ball, so, of course, who the fuck doesn't need a stress ball, uh, yeah, I don't ever intend on using this, damn, now it was $3 too, I kind of regret that now, this is fucking stupid, uh, the changing ball is cool though, but, yeah guys, it, it, don't buy that, that's fucking stupid, <laughs> I'm sitting here squeezing it Yeah, I'd rather just have my $3 back Fuck that uh, Let's see What else we got in here? Holy shit, what is this? I buy this? Oh yeah, yeah, it's the vampire floaty pin or some shit, right? Yeah, the floaty vampire pin uh, Let's see what we got here, man Oh, it's the yeah, it's Klaus Kinski from uh, Nosferatu in Venice Right there. Guys, you are not going to be able to see that image in there, but I assure you it's got his character right there. And it looks, yeah, he's floating up and down. It's a twist pin. Um, it does have the Severin, if I hold it the right way, it does have the Severin logo on it. I always need a fucking pin for back here. Uh, it is pretty fucking cool, though. I hope the fucking thing's easier. I bet once this thing runs out of fucking ink, 
that's said and done. <laughs> so I better enjoy this motherfucker. I don't know. Maybe I can take it apart. Watch me break it right here. Just got it and pulled it out of the box. Watch me break it. No, I'm not going to do that. I guarantee I'll break it. Ah. Severin doesn't probably want you to refill these fucking pins with your own uh, ink cartridges anyway. They're like, fuck that. That ink runs out. You buy another pin from us. So yeah, a Severin pin because why the fuck not? Um, I will say this. You know, the pin's going to come in handy. This right here, however, I don't know why the fuck I even bought that, man. It was like, fuck, was it five o'clock in the morning when I made this order? Fuck, man. Oh, those late nights being at work with no fucking sleep. The shit I buy. Anyway, there's a pen. What we got here? This is the, it's the wax mask, right? Yeah, it is. Mm. Ooh, and I'm, while well, I'm thinking about it, so this is the, uh, the wax mask keychain. I was hoping to get the little, you know what, fuck it. Can we just take it out? This is the wax mask keychain. I do plan on putting this on my key ring. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Those things might break. It's pretty solid, though. Holy fuck. Got some good detail in it. I'll hold it up right there. So you guys can see the mechanics in the hand right there for the muscles and the ligaments. Turn it around right there. All right. So, yeah. That's pretty fucking solid. Got some weight to it. That's for sure. How much was that fucking keychain? Five bucks? Well, at least I got it. At least I got it on sale. Um, they do also have a Night of the Demon uh, keychain that I saw in there. I did not order that because I know a lot of that merch from those, you know, those Night of the Demon bundles and the everything bundle and all that is just like everything else. They will be on sale later on down the road. And they usually take merch like that that's left over and they discount it on the website and they sell it for a long time because they do, they, ah, from what I've seen in the past, Severn does make a lot of this fucking merch. It's like mass produced. And, uh. Oh, oh, I'm about to forget one. There's so many fucking packing peanuts in here. I'm about to dump this shit out just to see. Wow, man. Uh. Is this the Severn? Yeah, the Severn and the Intervision pin I got is a little bit bigger than this one. But hey, at least I got them all now. I definitely wanted an enamel pin for this Severn Kids line right there. And as you can see, there it is. So, yeah, I got that there. Guys, I'm just trying to make sure I'm not forgetting nothing. It's it's a box full of fucking packing peanuts, so... I'd shit if I opened up the fucking flap of this shit. <laughs> and there was like the midnight Blu-ray sitting up under the cardboard flaps. Guys, I think that's it for the box. So, yeah. Oh, I definitely want to go through my stuff to make sure I got it all, so... What did I say? Uh, I got, got the 12 movies there, even though they sent me uh, Beyond Darkness instead of Midnight. I got the Midnight Slip Cover, the five empty cases. There should be 15 pins in all and four pieces of miscellaneous merch. So there's the Changeling Ball. There is the Severn Brain Stress Ball, which, guys, I'm telling you. Oh, my Lord. I don't even know why I bought that. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. Like, that's cool. Like, I paid three bucks for that all fucking day long. That's pretty cool. Um, I wouldn't mind actually having another one of these just to put them on each side of the fucking shelf. You know, I'm no, I have no idea how I'm going to stop them from rolling. I have to get like a little display, um, little piece to put this thing on. Hey, I like the hell out of that. That though, however, I have no idea why I bought that. Anyway, so what the hell? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I bought four pieces of miscellaneous merch that I wrote down. So that's the pin, the stress ball, the changeling, Satan's sadist patch. So that's... Those four right there, Severn threw in a nice purple sticker, which I'm surprised they didn't throw in a couple more, considering how much I fucking spent on this order. All right, and there's supposed to be 15 pins in all, so let me fucking count these things out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, and I guess, yeah, the keychain. So, yeah, they sent them all to me. So, let me fix that back right there. I just knocked the hell out of that thing. All right. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. I'll go over my order right quick with those pins and make sure that's all there. But, guys, thank you so much for sticking around. We're an hour and a half unboxing this fucking thing. Um, what can I say, guys? Uh, you know, even, you know, out of that whole fucking box, I'm glad that not only did they, you know, yeah, it sucks they forgot fucking midnight. I'll just contact them. I'm sure they'll send that, that thing to me. That's awesome. They threw the Beyond Darkness in there, though, by mistake. Even though that's the limited edition copy. 
Um, it does not have the uh, the Evil Dead 5 slip on it, which I can give a fuck less about that thing. But that's cool that it comes with the, the new special features and plus it's limited because it's got the uh, CD soundtrack in it. Uh, but out of that whole box, uh, this right here, that I paid $3 for, I have fucking no idea why I bought that. Uh, is what it is. It's three bucks, what the fuck. Um, do like that change on ball, though. That thing's got some fucking weight to it. I figured this would be... I was looking on the site, I was like, okay, what I could probably do is I could just take that and kind of like put it up on the fucking shelf. Because like I, I have all of my Severin uh, Blu-rays and DVDs and box sets on one big shelf. And I have just enough space on it where I get to work with like putting some miscellaneous kind of merch and display and shit. Um, yeah, like that, I kind of figured this to be kind of hollow or plastic or something. And it's not, it's actually like really fucking heavy and that's like really solid fucking rubber too, so... That's pretty cool. That's not bad for three bucks. It's got the Severn logo on it too, and the you know, so it's a replica. That's fucking cool. A little nice little swag just to fucking, just to have right there. That strength, that that fucking Severn uh, brain stress ball. There, that's fucking stupid. All right. So yeah, that was fifteen pins. The five cases, and guys, I'll hold them up again just so we can all look at them again. That's uh, Warriors of the Year twenty seventy two, a film by Lucio Fulci. Let me move this out of the way right quick. Uh, Raiders of uh, Raiders of Atlantis. Take the covers for these fucking movies too. Jesus Christ, if it's not enough to grab your attention, what the fuck will? Um, yeah, that is uh, Lucio Fulci for Warriors of the Year 2072. Uh, Ruggio uh, Diodato. Ruggiero, Ruggiero Diodato. I hope I'm saying his name correctly. Um... God damn, Severn's got a definitely uh, a lot of shit with that dude's name on it. And I probably have stuff up there in my... I definitely have stuff up there in my collection that this dude's directed. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Endgame right there. That is the limited edition one right there with the bonus CD soundtrack. Knocking over shit. Why don't you, Johnny? Um, also, too, that uh, Warriors of the Year 2072 that also comes with the bonus CD soundtrack down there. So, got some fucking soundtracks, man. Uh, the Day of Judgment. The fourth Victim. Uh, Skin Deep. The two disc limited edition of 2,000 units. Only with bonus CD soundtrack. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, I'll show it really quick, guys. So if you stay if you stayed this long, you should at least probably you know get some boobs. But Invasion of the Lost Gold. Enjoy that. There you go. Uh, next is, uh, Born for Hell. Oop, got mixed up. Uh, Strike Commando, which I can't fucking wait to get to that. I'm fucking, I'm hoping the second one, I'm hoping the first one's good, just so I can fucking have a reason to dive immediately straight into Strike Commando too. And, uh, here's Siege right there with the slip cover. Um, like I said, guys, I was supposed to get the Midnight Movie. I did buy the slip cover by itself for five bucks. Because the Midnight Movie was supposed to be in the bundle. However, they accidentally forgot to put Midnight in a box. And for some reason threw Beyond Darkness in there. Which I'm fine with that. It's okay. So, I was supposed to get 12 movies in a slipcover. I did get 12 movies in a slipcover. However, one of them was supposed to be a different title. But that's okay though. I'm sure I can email them and just say, Hey, uh, everything's great with my order. But will you please uh, send me Midnight because you did not put that in my box. And maybe I can email them and they can take that fucking Severn stress ball back and give me my three bucks back. No, I'm just fucking kidding. <laughs> That'd be some shitty shit. Uh, so there it is, guys. Got those uh, 12 films right there with the slip cover. And not to mention this fucking awesome goddamn heavy big ass book right here. Which is After the World Ends when post-apocalyptic movies were telling the future. Should we open this up right now? I'm definitely going to open this. Look at it. We're not going to fucking open it. We already got this far. Watch me run a fucking juice right here on the camera. At the very end. All right. Uh, that is a, it's not a, um, like a gloss cover. That's like a flat, uh, like a flat black. Yeah, see, they put the saran wrap on there and it kind of, that's okay. It fell right back in place. We're all good. Hmm. Throw that over there. Yeah, and the book kind of has like this design to make it look kind of old, like around the sides. I don't know if that's going to pick up like it's got wear and tear around it. Let me see. Oh, it's kind of, yeah, I see it now. It's kind of like a, it looks like the side of a VHS sleeve right there. You can see the little tab right there for where the VHS would pull out if it was a side loader. Um, let's see. 
I'm gonna open this bitch up. Oh my god, I saw the first fucking page of that. That looks awesome. Look at that shit, guys. Oh my god. Look at that artwork. My eyeballs just immediately went. Like, <laughs> just thumb through it. Mmm, the smell of books. It was just too. Wow. Yeah, this is gonna be fun right here. I just wanna. Let's just do a little fast little flick through right here. I know I'm just killing everybody's time. I'm sorry. I just can't help but be immersed into this. Look at here. Here's Death Sport right there. Look at that artwork on them pages, guys. Fuck, man. They did a good job with this, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at there. Here's, uh, of course, everybody knows that fucking film, Mad Max. If you ask me, I know a lot of people don't like Beyond Thunderdome, but I do. Give me that Tina Turner. In a short skirt. Oh, oh, there we go. Mad Max 2. There we go. So it looks like they definitely got some... Hmm. Look at there. Look at this. This must be like the Italian poster for Escape from New York. There you go. I hope you guys can see that really good. It has some great fucking artwork. This is a big, thick-ass book, too. I'm kind of curious. Oh, look at there. Fucking nice fold-out right there. Snake Plissken. Oh, I'm so glad, too, I got that fucking uh, Escape from New York, the Studio Canal, four-disc, 4K UHD box. There's one, uh, you know, I already had Prince of Darkness from Screen Factory on 4K, but I went ahead and bought that Studio Canal because you just, releases are too fucking good. But uh, Escape from New York and The Fog, I got from Studio Canal, those big four-disc uh, fucking box sets up there. Yeah, uh, Screen Factory hasn't released those in 4K UHD, so I did watch The Fog. Looked really fucking good. The thing looked even better. I don't know everybody's talking shit about that 4K release. I can tell you right now, it looks fucking great. Sounds great. However, I have not got to Escape from New York yet, which I'm dying to. I love the fuck out of that movie, and I have not seen, I have not seen it in 4K UHD. Uh, in that uh, Prince of Darkness, I have seen the Screen Factory release, but I definitely want to check out that uh, Studio Canal release. <laughs> Yeah, I am fucking, uh, I'm immersed by this. I'm so glad I fucking got this because I kind of second guessed this a little bit. And I'll be honest with you, if the book would have been at this point, since you know uh, that this fucking book sold out so fast during the Sever Nukes to Mid Year sale, and I said that you know I said when I was going over this that David Gregory immediately in an interview and on social media said that they would reprint more of these because there was such a demand for them. He wanted to make sure everybody that wanted one got one. Um. I could definitely say this right now. I went on there, you know, get the bundle, and it's called the Marauders Bundle. It had those three films that I showed you in the book. Um, if they would have made me buy the Marauders Bundle, like the films by themselves in a bundle, but the book had to come separately, and it was a book that was like 45 bucks, I probably would have passed on this, uh, sadly. But I'm glad I got that bundle, and the book was uh, still available inside that bundle. Um Oh my god, man, this is fucking, look at this. Oh, tell me if that's not fucking beautiful. Oh, I love shit like this. I'm gonna sit here for fucking probably an hour just thumb through this book. I don't wanna kill everybody's time, man. Oh, <laughs> man, there's some great fucking artwork in here. And there's like there's some, definitely some Italian uh, one sheet posters that I've never seen the art of. This shit's fucking crazy. That's I think did Vinegar Syndrome put this title on? Is it called like Hell Riders or something like that? I could be wrong. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I could be just thinking of something else. I haven't had sleep in a while, so my brain is. Ooh, look there, they got an interview with fucking Fred Williamson right there. Fucking sweet. All right, let's see how many fucking pages this thing is. This is a fucking thick-ass book. I would definitely say this is more than worth the fucking 35, 45. I can't remember. I know the, the Cannibal Holocaust book for the, uh, the, the Black Friday sale that just passed. The book did by itself sell out, and they wanted $45 for it. Uh, the book was still available in the Everything Bundle, I believe, which was like three nineteen or give or take or something. The book was only still available through that. I hope they do fucking uh, print more. If, if that book's anything like this one, 
um, with the artwork and it, just the, the layout, the size of it, and how fucking thick it is. I really, well, I forgot how many pages that fucking thing was. I think they expanded it by like 18 pages. I hope they fucking repressed the thing so, uh, so for the folks like me who fucking missed out on it, we could definitely get a chance to go back in here and buy it because I, if it's anything like this, I definitely will fork up the fucking cash for it. That's for sure. Oh, God. There it is, too. Look at that. Fuck yeah. What a movie. Hell comes the frog town right there. Man, Jesus Christ. That fucking Vinegar Syndrome release is goddamn beautiful. Um, and that's not to say anything bad about the, the Arrow video uh, release that they done. I, that, mm, that, that fucking thing got me by for the longest time. I still haven't. Never get rid of it. But uh, that, uh, that Vinegar Syndrome release, holy shit. I got it in time, too, with that big box that came with it, which I know is just nothing more than decoration, but... It was nice to fucking get it. And I got it on sale, too, before it sold out. It was like for a Black Friday. Oh, man, look at those. Yeah, baby, yeah. <clears throat> See, guys, I just wanted to have up sitting here fucking going through this whole book. Oh, man. There's definitely some fucking movies I want to check out in here. Oh, God, I'm so glad my, my wife can read Italian. I mean, the whole book is, you know, the uh, anyway, the book is English itself, but the the movie posters in here are definitely like Italian posters. So thankfully, she can read that shit and tell me what the fucking name of the movie is in English, and I can go track that shit down. Yeah, this book is fucking thick. Let me see how many pages this is. Wait, that's okay. Oh wait a minute, they must have printed that. They must have compressed it too tight. There we go. One sec. How was that? Yeah, guys. 254 pages. There you go right there just to show you there's the page number at the bottom. So, nice big fucking thick book right there. Love the hell out of that shit, man. I'm gonna devour this fucking thing. And it definitely looks like just post-apocalyptic kind of films. And everything that I saw in there was definitely like, it looks like artwork. I mean, it, the artwork's beautiful, but definitely looks like movies from the 70s and 80s. We've got Mad Max in there, Escape from New York. Uh, oh, there's so much shit. What is that? I've never heard of that. The Last Warrior? Oh, it's got Donald Pleasance in it. I, if, I bet you fucking 88 Films has put out like a lot of these movies, and it's just slipped under my radar, which is fucking sad. Because I can tell you right now, this shit looks... Uh, I think I... I've seen this artwork before. I think I have this too. This is I got a Scream Factory release of this. What the fuck is the name of this movie? I cannot think of it right now because I had not. Exterminators of the Year 2000, I think. Is that right there? Let me look on the side. It'll probably fucking say it. Exterminators of the Year 3000. I was close. 1983. I do have this from Scream Factory. Uh, man, just. <laughs> There's the film I just bought right there. Woo! Let's see. What does it say over there? What the fuck? Uh, why is it just called the Atlantis? That's not the name of it. What does that shit say? Raiders of the Atlantis? Oh, Raiders of Atlantis. So why are they just calling it the Atlantis there? I don't fucking know. Yeah, I'm super glad to fucking have this though. That's fucking nice. Hey, this uh, definitely makes up for that fucking piece of shit fucking stress ball <laughs> uh, yeah that's I'm definitely gonna crack into this ooh I saw where uh, Arrow Video released this a couple years ago I have not seen this fucking movie but there's a write up right there about it a pretty brief write up but there it is uh, what was it uh, Defcon 4 I've seen that artwork from Arrow Video might have to take a look at a trailer This, you know it's always great to have one of these fucking books too that's why I love compilation DVDs, especially like the Video Nasties, uh, the the, vol the two volumes they put out of that. Um, Nucleus Films and Intervision partnering together to do the Grindhouse uh, Classics trailer compilation. Um, Anthony Ball uh, saw me praising that thing. I was loving it, and he was like, hey, there's a volume two, three, and four that goes with that. Just Intervision and Severin only got the first one. And sure enough, he sent me all four of those things. I have not went through the last, well, number four, but I have. I've watched one, two, and three, and I think I got halfway through three, so I got a little bit more to go on that, and what a treat that is. 
it's such a treat to go through there and see all the trailers. And then it's another treat to go through a book like this. See some shit in there that catches your eye. Read a little summary up on it. You know, find out a little information on it. Fucking go dig up some trailers and see what it's all about. And see if it catches you. I just watched this uh, movie the other night. Um, I bought this film from the Sever Nukes, The Mid-Year Sale. This was a recommend recommendation from my buddy, uh, Donato Giallo. Um, this is the movie that Severin put out right here. It's called Threads. What a fucking depressing movie. I'm not trying to say that movie's bad or anything. It's a very good film. Uh, that movie is super impactful. Um, when that movie end, when the fucking credits finally rolled, and let me tell you, from the time the movie starts, it starts up, everything's, you know, everything's getting, getting ready to gear up for the fucking nuke to go off. When that nuclear warhead goes off, everything goes to shit very fast and it keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Like, humanity humanity itself takes a fucking horrible dive. By the time the credits fucking rolled on that movie, I had to literally go watch some cartoons just to pick my fucking spirits back up because I was emotionally fucking drained after that movie. Uh, that movie uh, was kind of like, uh, what is that, uh, that Criterion release that Cody sent me? Uh, Come and See. Um, I mean, just super impactful. By the time the credits roll on that, you feel every fucking scene of that movie. It'll make you think, that's for sure. Oh, make you definitely appreciate the life that you have and, uh, and so forth. Makes you feel very blessed, that's for sure. Because holy fuck, does those get depressing. <laughs> look at this, guys. Look at this artwork right there. That's pretty fucking sweet. Land of Doom. Hmm. Yeah, I have to fucking say, man. Holy shit. I wonder if, you know, I don't know if Severn has any more books like this. You know, other than, you know, I know they have this one and Cannibal Holocaust. I'm wondering now if they have any other fucking books I need to check into. Because if they do, I'm going to chase them down. Especially if they've done them anywhere near as good as that right there. That is fucking awesome. They, you know, like I said, guys, it was brand new. You saw me take the saran wrap off of it. They wrapped that saran. I know it wasn't Severn, but I guess Pulse Video. Or whoever fucking uh, does their merchandise, they put the saran wrap on there, on there so tight, and there's such a gap between the hardcover right there on the edges and the pages that kind of dog eared a little bit. But they're going back in place though, so I can't bitch too much. But uh, I kind of, when I went to go take the saran wrap off this, I thought that this was going to be like, um, by the way it is on the website, like the picture, the cover looks very glossy, and the image is like very bright and vivid. But um, I don't know if you can really tell by looking at it. It's a uh, that camera's not really gonna probably say what I'm trying to show you what I'm trying to say. But it uh, it looks very uh, it looks very flat, like it's purposely meant to be old, and the artwork seems kind of faded a little bit. Um, I'd say that's a pretty cool aesthetic to it, though. But I mean, it's basically uh, it's, a, it's a book celebrating '70s and '80s films, so of course it's gonna have a very retro look to it and of course everybody's into retro shit now so there's a huge market for that so that aesthetic though is fucking that is great so yeah this will be a permanent fixture on my fucking coffee table right here super glad to have that but like i said guys that came in the uh i will tell you too you know what we came this far i might as well break it down as good as i can um guys the marauders bundle i will go ahead and tell you that, because they're no longer available um, like I said before the site went down for seven films to get their website ready for the Black Friday sale they said hey no these bundles are going to be available after the site goes down get them while you can of course you know you can get you can get all this shit by itself individually but if you get in a bundle you get to save a little bit of money and uh, none of this shit was going to be discounted for the sale so that's why I hopped oh, sorry for that uh, let's see but these uh, it was these three titles right here I believe Razor of Atlantis Endgame. So, this was the Marauders bundle right here, which was the book, Endgame, Raiders of Atlantis, and Warriors of the Year 2072. That bundle right there, book in these three movies, that was 104 bucks. Um, I know that is a little steep, but if you really kind of think about it, even if the let's say the Let's say the the movies right there were twenty five a piece and the book was twenty five. You know that's a hundred bucks right there. I assure you they're not. These movies are like twenty eight dollars a piece and this book is like I think it's thirty five or forty. Could be forty five. I really couldn't tell you, but I assure you all this stuff is more expensive than 
uh, $25, $26 a piece. So that was a nice little deal. Um, I'll go up on the next one right here. That was uh, Skin Deep Born from Hell and Siege, I think it is, for that next bundle. Yeah, I'm looking at the picture right there. Make sure I got that right so I'm not lying to nobody. Uh, the July bundle, which is Skin Deep Born from Hell and Siege. Uh, Skin Deep is the two-disc uh, limited edition version right here. Born for Hell, which has a ton of spe uh, uh, fucking features on it. And uh, Siege right here with a slip cover. Um, this feels like there's only one disc in there. I don't think there's like a CD soundtrack in there. But uh, all three of these together right here was $79. Um, so yeah, I would say, you know, if they were $25 a piece, what's that, like $75? But that's $79, so four more. So yeah, you know, it's a little bit more than, what is that, like $26.50 a piece pretty much. And I know this one right here by itself on the several websites, like $34 by itself. I think Siege is one that's uh, $28, if I'm not mistaken. And that's another one that's $28 right there. So I got to save a few bucks uh, going that route. Hold on a sec, guys. Sorry about that. Ooh. Um, let me see. This one right here. If I can get this shit together. Um, here we go, guys. This is the uh, the June 2021 Blu-ray bundle. Of course, that was Strike Commando, Strike Commando 2, and Invasion, Invaders of the Lost Gold. This bundle right here, which consisted of all three of these films for the month of June, that was $79 as well. So three films again for $79. Um, I think the Strike Commando movies, I think they're $28 a piece on the Severn website. And I think this is one that's uh, also 28. I could be, I could, I, I, that sounds about right. Um, I have to find this one right quick. For some reason, my pictures did not load up right for this last one. All right, guys. So, and this is the fuck up right here. Um, so, basically for the uh, the September bundle, it was the fourth victim. And uh, also a day of judgment. And, of course, it was supposed to be midnight in there. But, you know, they sent me the one movie by mistake. Those three movies were $75, so yeah, that was $25 a piece. I think they're like $28 on the website, something like that. I think you can go to like Orbit and still get these for like $25 a pop, so it's about the same price. So I went ahead and just got them from Severin. That slipcover was 5 bucks. Supposed to be midnight, the movie, but they sent me Beyond Darkness instead. And I think that's uh, either $28 or $34 on the website before it went down. Um, You know what? And I was telling Alan the other day that I placed my, you know, that huge order to get from Severn, and I told him, he was like, asking me, he's like, hey, what'd you get? And I was like, you know, Severn said on Facebook, like, all the bundles for this year that they released so far, they wouldn't be available uh, when the site went down. So I went and just fucking bought everything. And he was like, damn, you bought everything? I was like, yep. But I lied to him, though, and I, I, did, uh, I didn't, didn't mean to. I just fucking caught myself off guard a little bit and spoke too soon. But, um, like I said, I, I told him I didn't order the Jess, Frank, uh, the Jess Franco bundle because I already had an Angel for Satan um, already got, you know, the Franco Noir release that that's coming in the mail from eBay instead of paying a crazy amount of money for that bundle, which I think was like 79 bucks. Um, you know, already had an angel for Satan Franco, uh, you know, the Franco Noir that's coming. I think that's even, I think that has two movies in it, if I'm not mistaken. It could just be one movie. I'm not really sure. And plus it came with a barber still pin. So I have everything for that. I just, I'm piecing it together. One came from Orbit. One came from Severin, the pin, and the uh, the Franco Noir is coming from a seller on eBay. I got that for like 15 bucks. Couldn't fucking believe it. But there was another one that I accidentally missed on. I can't believe I'd done it, but I fucking did. Um, there was a bundle that they had on there that was available. Unfortunately, it's no longer available. I have to get these individually now. But uh, I'll show these to you right quick. But it was the August 2021 bundle. For some reason, I forgot to add this to the cart. I think it was, you know, like I said, it was 5 o'clock in the morning. I was placing an order for all this shit. Um, I wish I took a couple minutes just to review my order real quick to realize that I did miss the month of August, but I did miss it, and there it is, guys. That is the four films right there that I did miss in that bundle. I don't think it came with anything else, like swag or anything, like pins or nothing. But anyway, that is the uh, uh, the Elequ Elequinca. Uh, Blu-ray release right there. Uh, let's see. No one heard the screen. Blu-ray, Cannibal Man limited edition Blu-ray with slipcover, and of course the Overboard Blu-ray with slipcover. All four of those movies in that bundle right there they had for 98 bucks. 
Uh, for me to buy those individually, I'm probably looking at a couple dollars more to get all that. I know overboard, I think it was like seventeen fifty in the sale, but the sale's over now, so that's going to be more expensive. Cannibal Man definitely was not discounted. I think that fucking thing was like thirty four bucks. Um, no one heard the scream. That's another one's like twenty eight bucks, I think. And uh, I'm not really even sure about that. Um, I'm trying to pronounce that. That's uh, <laughs> uh, shit. Quinkle Collection. I'm not even sure what that is, but I'm sure that's another one that's like, you know, 28 to 34 hour range. But I did. I fucked up, Alan. So if you're watching this, man, not only did I, not only did I correct myself, man, by saying, hey, I didn't get the, uh, the Jess Franco shit because I have it all basically coming, just sourcing it from three different places. Um, but I completely forgot the August uh, shit after I was talking to you the other night. I went to go look back at my phone and my order, and I was like, wait a fucking second. Where, where, what was August? Where the fuck is it at? What was it? Yeah, I found the picture of it that I'd screenshot off at Facebook just to remind myself to order it. And for some reason, I just didn't catch it, and I fucked up and forgot it. So, hopefully, that shit will still be around the next time a sale comes up, because I want to try to grab it for the best price, and maybe I can get it below that $98 mark for them four films. But, guys, thank you so much for sticking around. That's an hour and 55 minutes. Damn, we are going on two hours. Uh, so glad to have that box in. Uh, tomorrow I'll probably be getting back here to do another video because finally my Screen Factory Shocktober sale that I ordered on October 30th is finally here even though it took over a month. Today is December 2nd. It should be in tomorrow so that's December 3rd. So a month and a couple days um, they sent me I ordered 10 titles. They sent me one fucking title and I was like wait a minute where's the other 9 at? And of course same story as 2020 and 2019 when I placed my Shocktober sale orders I contacted them and they said yeah no don't worry we, we're we going to send you your shit as soon as we get it unfortunately we uh, we had a uh, we had an increase in volume of orders and we do not have enough stock on hand so we are waiting for the manufacturer to send us units as soon as they send them to us we will send them to you the one film that they did send me that I did order was the Manster Oh, so I got nine more coming. So I'll unbox those tomorrow and show you guys that. Uh, and also I have a box from Orbit DVD coming, which has three goodies in it that I cannot wait to get. Uh, I'm so I'll show that too. But guys, thank you so much for sticking around watching the video, especially if you made it this far. Holy shit, you are dedicated. Uh, guys, please hit me up in the comments section if you want to discuss anything with about the films, the book, the pins, whatever from Severin, whatever. Hit me up in the comments section. Let's get that conversation started. You know, do you have any of those releases? Is there one in there that you're like, hey, you definitely need to watch that one. That's the best one out of the stack. Is there one that's just complete shit that, you know, maybe I should just save to the fucking end? Save for a rainy day or something like that. Maybe save for a day where I've already had about six or seven beers in me so I can try to enjoy the best of it. Um, you know, let me know your thoughts on that book, too, if you have it as well. Uh, you know, the pins. Uh, let me know if you're a pin collector. You know, what's your favorite ones? Um, you know, is there any in there that uh, they have on the website that I should definitely look into getting? Um, I will tell you this, guys. Uh, you know, looking at the website of what they have to offer for pins and then actually getting them in hand, that can be a little bit of a play. Um, I still say that Christopher Lee and that Peter Cushing pin is still uh, my favorites. But there's a couple in there, man. Like that, uh, just sitting right here on top, that's... Fucking wicked as shit, man. Beyond the Darkness, that's a great looking pin. Not to mention fucking Donald Pleasant, so I'm not going to pull all these out again, but I love the hell out of them. There's a few of them in there, that, uh, especially like the Klaus Kinski one. I was like, wow, that's really fucking small on the website. It kind of portrays it to be a little bit bigger. So, uh, hey, that's just a gamble, though. And at least I got all the shit for 50% off. But, uh, but yeah, guys, if you collect any of the pins, and there's definitely some ones uh, that's on the website that you didn't see me show right there, and I should definitely look into getting them, let me know. Um, uh, Anything Severin related for this fucking video, please hit me up in the comment section if you're a fan of them, if you're not. Um, yeah, guys, thank you so much for sticking around watching the video right here. Two-hour mark. If you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button. I try to be thorough and punctual. Um, my videos are long as fuck. I do know that. But I try to take my time and go over everything instead of just rushing through bullshit. And uh, I try to show everything that I get in. Uh, in case somebody else wants to jump on the website and get it, I try to discuss price points as well. Um, I see people on YouTube that do that sometimes. And to me, it kind of feels like they're just trying to brag about how much money they spend all at once. Um, I don't like that shit. Um, I go over price points and what I paid for the shit just so you can kind of get an idea of what you need to spend, 
what the ballpark is and maybe you can get it for cheaper. As I stated before, those bundles right there that I just showed you, that's now no longer available through Severn. Um, they're not going to be no longer available through Severn as a bundle. They will be sold individually. So for the price I told you for the bundle and you're wanting to get it as well, if you're trying to go through eBay or another source, try to get it for cheaper than what I paid for it. But uh, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. Listen to me go for two hours unboxing one box from Severn with 12 movies in it, one slipcover, 15 pins, and four pieces of miscellaneous merch, including that piece of shit right there. Uh, but I do thank you for sticking around, if you did. And uh, guys, until next time, stay safe and be careful.